Welcome, Destiny. Uh, so the I guess the way we the way this all set up was somebody uh, on Twitter tweeted at both of us and uh, I guess asked us if we'd be interested in having like a debate or discussion on veganism. And uh, I wasn't sure like what your stance on this whole topic was. And like I said, sure, um, I'm down with having a debate or a discussion with you about veganism. And uh, from what you posted on Twitter, it looks like you're mostly or like halfway convinced about the uh, whole like the ideological principles of veganism. So um, like, I'm sure, you know, okay, good idea. I'm sure you understand uh, my whole side of this whole thing. I think the animal agriculture industry is completely uneth unethical, unjustifiable. Uh, I think it's wrong to kill and eat animals for food if you don't have to. So uh, why don't you just talk about your position on the whole thing? Yeah. So I, I guess um, I'm, I'm, I guess my goal is going to be to present a um, an argument, an ethical argument in favor of meat eating or, or a moral one, um, and then to run through, I guess, some of yours. I think there are a lot of arguments that people use in favor of veganism that aren't really legitimate arguments, um, right. but I understand that this is, um, I feel very strongly about a lot of views I have, but this is one of those things where in like 50 to 100 years, especially if lab-grown meat continues to make progress, I, I can see this as being something that we look back on and think like, what the fuck were we thinking? Like, so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about things. Um, and then I also kind of just feel bad for you because I look at your conversations with people like no bullshit and I see so you, like, talk to a lot of, like, really fucking stupid meat eaters, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, like, people always say that I attack low-hanging fruit, but it's not really the case. It's really, those are the only people who will bother to have a debate with me. Yeah, no, I understand. And mo and honestly, like, mo like if I had to choose a side with more intellectual integrity, like, honestly, most people that eat meat are retarded as fuck anyway. Like, you have people <laughs> that own animals and are, like, crying and crying that, like, Cecil the lion died, but then they eat, like, fucking millions and millions of pounds of beef, like, every year, and it's, like, it seems a little bit inconsistent to me, but, yeah. Right, okay, so, um, why don't we just have a, why don't you, uh, talk about your side of the story, maybe, uh, Go, go through some of the reasons why you think it might be uh, ethical or justifiable to eat meat right now sure. like for you. So the, basically the, the, the way that I kind of set up my argument is um, I, I guess it's a little bit axiomatic in that I just define the fact that humans exist on a different level than animals and that gives us the right to do whatever to them. Basically the way that I, I kind of draw this distinction is that animals aren't really capable of reciprocating social value the same way that people are. So for instance, if we can have like a social standard of values amongst humans, I can say, um, you know, like we shouldn't kill each other, we shouldn't steal from each other, et cetera, et cetera. Um, other humans can respect that. They can, if they're too young to, they can grow to respect it, right? They're capable of like intellectually recognizing that thing. Whereas animals for the most part are not, except maybe with, with very few exceptions, although I'm not even sure how, how real that is. So, for instance, I could respect a lion's right to life as much as possible or a cow's right to life or whatever, but these animals will never share that same respect with me and, to take it further, will also be constantly killing other animals in the wilderness as well. I can never hold them to any kind of moral or ethical standard. It's kind of like how I approach it. Okay, so I think I, I even discussed this a little bit with uh, No Bullshit and uh, the Worskis. Okay. Um, you're basically saying uh, social contracts mm -hmm. are what essentially make it right or wrong to kill an animal. So because an animal can't uh, form a social contract with you, therefore it's okay to kill an animal. Oof, yeah, that's it. Like th that, that is your argument? Pr I, I yeah, just pretty, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Okay, well, um, the thing is, like, this kind of falls apart when you put this in an anthropocentric context because... If a human being can't form a social contract with you, mm -hmm. does that make it okay to kill that human being? So, like, I'm not even talking about, okay, like, horrible, horrible, violent. I'm not even talking about horrible, violent criminals. Like, obviously, when they break a social contract, we, you know, put them in jail or prison or something like that. Um, what about, like, un uncontacted tribes people where if they see you, they'll, like, try to attack you and kill you on site? Do you think it's okay to massacre like indigenous populations who have been like uncontacted and are violent towards any outsiders 
Yeah, so the way that I, um, to, to, to address your earlier points and then to move to the tribes people, like I would argue that we already do to some extent accept a kind of a lower class of treatment for people that don't reciprocate values. You already brought up people like prisoners, um, pe people that murder, right? If somebody steps into your property to, to kill you, then you immediately right. remove all respect from them, right? If, if they, right. Um, and then even, you could even extend that further as fucked up as it sounds to people with severe mental illness as well, right? Like we treat them as lower class citizens. Oftentimes they are required to have permanent caretakers. They can be restricted to certain facilities um to take it a step further for tribes people i guess i would kind of lean back on that earlier argument that i know that humans are capable uh, uh, of being cognizant of social contract so even if they weren't currently they have the potential to be so but to take it a step further we'll, we'll assume in your world that they're past that point they're all in their 30s or 40s or whatever and they're never going to go to that level then i don't know if morally i would say like oh well it's not okay to to, 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 I guess, genocide that group of people since they're never capable of, of reciprocating that social contract. Right. Like, you don't see that as sort of a double standard where this really doesn't become something about a social contract. It's really more to do with um, you just thinking, just being kind of biased to your own species in a sort of illogical way. Um, well, I mean, I would argue that I am biased towards my own species for sure, be because it is my species, right? Because you have a chance, like yeah. I, that, for me personally, that's where a lot of the social contract comes from, right? Like, um, yeah. it's a self-interested point of view. Like I respect your rights to live and exist because I want you to respect my rights to live and exist, right? I'm a human, you're a human. We share these kinds of values with one another. Um, and again, like that's something that we can reciprocate, I guess, because we're humans that other animals can't necessarily reciprocate. So I, I would agree with you in calling it a bias. I don't know if I would call it an irrational bias. I think it is founded on some rationality, but. Well, the thing is, if you're going to say social contract mm -hmm. is what makes it okay to kill animals, but you know, in the situation I gave you, you wouldn't accept that for a human being. You don't find that uh, sort of hypocritical and sort of a double standard. Wait, where I wouldn't accept. What for a human being? Well, no, sorry. Like if a human being can't um, form a social contract with you, you wouldn't say, okay, we have to murder that person. Whereas you would say, oh no, like, I, that's I said, totally I, acceptable. yeah, I said, I, I, I said I would. If we, if you came across a tribe of people, or whatever, and these people were never ever, like I, I was assuming, like in your world, say these people were past the point of ever being um, integrated into society, and they would constantly try to kill other people. I would say that in that case, yeah, sure, it's okay. I would find it morally, I guess, acceptable to to genocide that group of people or whatever. Really, like even if, um, I I can't remember their the exact name of this tribe, but there's this very small island where a tribe of people live. Um, they're for the most part, they've never really been contacted. I think there's one, um, like the, the British at one point contacted mm -hmm. them, but they had a really bad experience. And since then they've been super, super hostile to outsiders. Like they just shoot bows and arrows at anyone who tries to come by their Island. Mm -hmm. Well, like the thing is, um, we understand that these people like, you know, they're human beings, they're sentient, they can experience pain and suffering. And even though like they're primitive and everything, and they have, like a violent cult, like culture, at least they're violent to outsiders. You know, we can sort of respect their right to life. We can see them as human beings. Um, so you're, it's just completely unnecessary to go up to them and just completely massacre them all. And that's sort of how I see the animal agriculture industry. Like, okay, even if they can't, you know, reciprocate, reciprocate rights or, you know, uh, respect a social contract, you're just causing harm and suffering for absolutely no reason. So um, there's kind of two parts to that. Um, I, I guess on the first one, if it was completely and totally avoidable, if, if, you, if there was absolutely nothing to gain by, I guess, genociding an island full of these tribes people or whatever, um, I would argue it's probably unnecessary. I don't know if I would attack that from a moral or ethical point of view, though, and just say that this is a waste of resources or something, um, which you can probably make similar arguments about the animal agriculture industry as well. Um, for the uh, second part of that... Um... Oh, fuck. What was the second part of what you said? I just lost it. Oh, okay. Well, I was basically saying um, I see the animal agriculture industry as completely unnecessary, sort of like how it would be completely unnecessary to go over to that island and just massacre those group of people for like pretty much no reason.
Um, like I, I just don't oh, see the oh, purpose oh, sorry, of animal sorry. agriculture. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I got it. Um, for, so for the second thing, in terms of like how I construct rights or um, civil liberties or, or, or ethical, moral behavior, whatever for people, t- typically my default assumption is that everything is okay unless it's not okay to do so, right? And then when something okay, becomes... that's that's a little confusing. Sure. Maybe. You... So, yeah, 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 I'm loving it. So everything is okay unless it's not okay to do so. And what makes something not okay is generally when you're infringing on the rights of another human. So for instance, is it morally ethical to like masturbate, right? Well, if you're not hurting anybody else, it's fine. Is it morally ethical to smoke weed or drink alcohol? Sure thing, that's fine. Is it morally ethical to steal something from somebody else or to rape or murder somebody? Well, no, because now you're infringing on the rights of another human, a person whose rights we respect, right? And then when it comes right. to somebody like animals, right? Because I, at least in my worldview, I've set it up to where I don't really respect the rights of anybody that's not capable of receiving vacation um you do what you wish right is essentially my approach to it okay so indigenous tribes people like if you just so wish to maybe mm-hmm. you just enjoy killing people you think it's not a moral issue to just massacre an entire island of indigenous people who just you know who are hostile to outside if they're not capable of reciprocating then yeah go for it really it sounds like, really cold but yeah okay um like I see another issue with this um, this argument of the social contract argument because, mm-hmm. um, like you could use that to justify the Holocaust because like okay Nazis can just say well we don't give a shit about forming a social contract with Jews so we can just kill them like it, it's almost like a, a might makes right argument. Um, hold on, let me write these down so I don't forget these. Um, so the, the, the thing about that is that when you talk about Jews, right now, you're starting to split people up into different groups of people. And I would have to ask what your rationale is for doing something like that. So for me personally, I don't put groups of humans above other groups of humans. Um, some people might do it on the basis of race or gender. Men are better than women. White people are better than black people, Asian people or whatever, right? Like that. Um, but, but if you're going to make that kind of assertion that you want to draw a line or a distinction between like Jews and non-Jews, then you, you, I have to ask for a reason why you have to give a good rational, logical argument for that. And I don't think the Nazis provided any kind of compelling argument for why Jews were worthy of extermination, you know. And insofar as my definition goes, um, you know, I, I think that Jewish people are probably p- plenty capable of engaging in social contract um, or, or any other kind of, you know, human-like behavior. I think most humans are, um, or, or if not all humans are, right, right, aside from the severely mentally disabled or murderers or rapists or whatever. So I, I don't think that you could use my philosophy to defend Nazism because Nazism calls for a special argument for why Jews are subhuman, which I don't think they adequately ever provided. Okay, so then it, it this this sort of comes back to uh, the name the trait argument, though. I guess you are choosing social contract, mm-hmm. but um, like the issue I see there is if you're going to say social contract is what ultimately makes something like morally justifiable, mm-hmm. uh, then basically anyone at any point could just say, like, I don't choose to have a social contract with you. And therefore, like, like again, it, it's basically a might makes right argument. Um, you're not like what you consider moral doesn't have anything to do with actual outcome of a situation. It's just whether or not somebody can like reciprocate these moral values with you. Yeah, so for the first, for, for the, so this is a two-parter. To take the first part, um, when you say anybody can leave a social contract, I mean, they can. People can leave a social contract anytime they want. If I want to, I can walk across the street and murder my neighbors to steal their shit if I want to. But as soon as I exit that social contract, then other people no longer have the, the, the um, responsibility to maintain that social contract with me, right? The police will show up or somebody else could kill me in the act of right. robbery and whatnot. Um, for the second part, what you consider moral has nothing to do with the outcome of the situation. Um, I, I'm not very much a, an ends justify the means person. I think that um, I think that morality should be considered through and through. Um, so, for instance, um, I, I, we, you get into weird territories when you're like, should you consider the outcome when you're when you're talking about morality? Like things like the trolley problem at that point, right? If you could push somebody in front of a moving train to save four people, four people, would you do it, or would you kill one person to harvest organs to save ten people? Like, I, I feel like you get into weird areas that I don't usually consider morality based on outcomes, but more on the actions that you're committing. Well, this isn't even even really a trolley situation here. It's like mm-hmm. you could either choose to cause the suffering death of animals or you could choose not to it's not like you have to 
kill somebody to save a bunch of other people like no you're you're literally just choosing am i going to kill these animals or not oh sure yeah no in, in that situation i agree i was just speaking to the general idea of considering morals based on the outcome so and again like to, to back up for choosing the to suffering and death of animals this is where i wouldn't draw a distinction between the suffering death of animals versus the suffering and death of a plant like th these things i would consider to be morally well plants equivalent. aren't sentient and they they have no consciousness like they can't suffer um I, I mean, I, I feel like suffering is a, is a pretty loaded word. Um, we could go into that specifically, or sentience. I guess we can go into that as well. Um, you you actually think plants are sentient? Um, well, well, no. I was going to say, why does sentience matter? What do you mean by sentience? Oh, sentience, like the like having consciousness, mm -hmm. the ability to have pain and suffering, uh, have thoughts, feelings, emotions, experience life uh, from a subjective point of view. Gotcha. So I guess when I, so I have a very cold view, I guess, of all of this. So I, I, I don't, um, are you spiritual at all or do you believe in religion or anything? Um, no, like I'm not religious at all. I don't believe in any kind of God, I guess. I wouldn't call myself spiritual ne like necessarily. Gotcha. But, um, so when I, when I look at things like pain and suffering, this is all going to sound really cold. I'm sorry. But like when I look at things like pain and suffering, like these are essentially mechanisms that organisms have to avoid uh, negative stimuli. Right. Well, essentially. Yeah, right. Absolutely. If, if you hit absolutely. an animal, um, if you, if you hit a person, right, you, you know, you have some built in natural responses, right? You're, you're cover your face, you turn your back. Um, you know, maybe you do things to avoid pain, right? Animals are much the same way. If you kick an animal or kick a dog, oftentimes they'll cry, um, out for help or they'll run away. Right. Uh, but I think you can make, so there are similar types of avoidance mechanisms in plants as well, right? Certain plants will grow towards sunlight to maximize nutrients. Um, I'm sure that there are different um, ways that plants do things to uh, maximize their gathering of nutrients, right? Weeds will grow deeper uh, roots to try to take uh, nutrients from grass and shit like I, I just view these all as like um I, I guess like mechanisms of things that exist i don't necessarily add like a moral weight to it just because something has the mechanism built in to avoid um you know some sort of negative stimuli i don't know if that suddenly grants it uh any kind of like moral uh i guess moral right to exist i guess i don't know it's something along those lines okay um i don't know how far like you take this like are mm -hmm. you really saying um that it's perfectly fine to skin animals alive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, so really? so he here's the big here's the big fuck up with meat eaters, and this is why I think most meat eaters are, are, are really fucked. Um, and, and I understand. I think we're kind of going down the emotional appeal route. But I, but I think that when it comes to animal rights, I think it's either everything or nothing. Um, I, and I'm very much, obviously, since I'm making the argument from the meat eater point of view, I have to stand on the everything side. Um, I don't think that if you are, are a meat eater, if you're watching this debate as a meat eater, I think it's really stupid to try and draw a distinction between like, well, I think that it's okay to massively harvest and, and torture and eat tons of animals, but I don't think that like bullfighting or skinning animals is okay. Like this is a bad thing. So I, I'm going to sit on the end of pretty much any treatment towards animals is permissible um, because I don't consider them as, as having any of the rights that humans do what would be my point of view. Okay. So like the problem I have with this is mm -hmm. your, okay, th this is strange. So you don't actually it seems like like this is a very nihilist perspective. You're basically yeah, saying for, to some extent, sure. Like you're basically saying, uh, it doesn't matter who you harm, how, like, for what reason. Um, it's basically like you're saying morals just don't exist. Well, unless you're capable of reciprocating, the, right? The social contract is kind of what I construct everything off of, right? Okay. So if they are capable of that, then you extend to them the same rights that you would extend to yourself or demand for yourself, rather. I don't under, like I don't understand how that is the only determining factor uh, that would make something either like immoral or moral. Like, why don't you take um, actual the outcome of the situation into account? Like, OK, you don't have to kill and eat animals mm -hmm. like you can just eat plants. So you do recognize that animals are sentient beings that can experience pain and suffering. Like, why don't you recognize that, okay, even though these animals can't uh, reciprocate rights and, you know, agree to a social contract, I'm just causing unnecessary suffering and death to these animals that would rather not suffer and have a will to live. Like, why don't you recognize that as something important? 
Um, okay, so to, to kind of break this down point by point. So for the first one, in, in terms of I never look at like what you have to do or don't have to do, right? There are a lot of things that you do that you don't necessarily have to do, right? We don't have to be engaging in a conversation, you know, right now online. We don't have to play video games or have to do what, what a million other things we do, right? So I, I don't really consider those to be... Um, I guess like arguments against something um, in terms of the animals are sentient beings. So sentience is, is a, is a trait that in and of itself, I just don't see much value in. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can necessarily quantify that or what it's, what it's relevance really is um, to, to regarding whether or not, or how you should treat something, right? Like a, like a murderer or somebody else might be sentient, but that doesn't really mean anything to me in regards to whether or not I should respect the right to life. Um, and then when you talk about like, unnecessary suffering of death for animals and whatnot. Um, I, I mean, we're kind of circular at this point to where I, I would say that I, I would need a compelling reason to believe why animals should have some kind of right to exist. Like, w what is it, what is the compelling defining thing that makes it so that I should look at an animal and go, okay, well, this is something that is worthy of protection, worthy of some sort of right being extended to it, aside from, like, the, the sentience thing, I guess, is the, the argument that doesn't necessarily well, do it for me. Like, do you just like? Are are you actually a sociopath? <laughs> maybe, maybe no, a like, little seriously, bit. Like, uh, maybe a little bit, but I, but I don't think it's relevant to the conversation. No, well, I think it kind of is. Um, okay. Like, uh, most people have empathy, mm -hmm. and they can understand that you know I don't like it when I get hurt, or I wouldn't want to be killed. Mm -hmm. And since these animals are also sentient, like obviously they don't have the same cognitive ability that we do and they're not sentient to the extent we are, they still have a will to live similar to similar to us. And, you know, they feel pain similar to us, like uh, even emotional pain. Like if you rip a baby cow away from its mother, like they they both it's insanely stressful for both the mother and the baby cow. So like knowing that why would you be perfectly fine with just causing that harm to another living being? So, um, it, so again, in breaking all of these down, I'm trying to do this like as rationally as possible. So I'm trying to avoid the emotional arguments here. Um, w when you talk about how like, I don't like it when I'm killed since these animals are also sentient, et cetera, like this is, I think this kind of plays into my end where it's like, I, I don't like to be killed and I don't want to be killed or raped or hurt or whatever. And, because of that, I extend that right to other people who can also understand and accept that. So I don't kill my neighbor or steal his shit or kill his children or whatever because I don't want him stealing my shit, killing me, or killing my children, right? I can engage in that contract with him. He understands it. I understand it. And then all of society is kind of built on this reciprocation. If I venture into a forest and there's like a, you know, like a hungry fucking bear or some shit, I can respect him and his right to life and not hurt his children all I want. But if he's hungry and he sees me, I'm just a fucking meal to him. He'll never, ever, ever have that same respect for me. Right. Well, I, I don't see why that matters. Like, you can just choose, I don't know, not to walk into the forest and walk into a bear's territory and not kill it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could choose that, or I could choose to walk into the forest and kill it. I just don't see a strong moral compulsion one way or the other. Um, and if the if killing it or whatever brings me entertainment or joy or food or whatever, um, or, or even just entertainment, right? Because let's be real, you don't really need to eat me to survive, right? So we'll just say entertainment. I would need a compelling reason not to entertain myself. And since I don't have a strong argument for respecting the life of a bear any more than the life of a tree or a stalk of corn or whatever, I just wouldn't see a compelling reason not to do it. Okay, so you're saying that your own personal enjoyment is worth more than any animal's life? Yeah. Okay. This is... much much the same way that it would be worth more than the than the life of like a tree or or a plant or whatever. Not in the same. Now I wouldn't make the argument like you should be able to set fields ablaze or whatever because there are a right, ton of right. other negative things that could happen as well. But okay, um, the problem I'm seeing here is like you're basically saying, well sentience like the ability to feel pain and suffering that doesn't matter and mm -hmm. you just throw away that as any kind of value but it, it's almost as if you're arbitrarily placing a value on on a social contract so i so again things become like a little bit axiomatic here where we just we're kind of I'm assuming something to be true because it is like the, the the reason why I harp on the social contract is because I think that you can build an entire civilization of that of, of perfectly functioning human beings that function and exist and live with each other peacefully 
because of that social contract. So I, I guess you could argue that that might be arbitrary, but but then I turn around and I ask you, like, how do you draw a distinction between, you know, plants versus animals or, or, or you know, especially lower animals versus more complicated plants? Like, I feel like your distinctions become as arbitrary as mine, whereas at least for the social contract, I can point to, well, I can build society and civilization around this. So that's kind of how I look at the social contract as being my way of constructing everything, you know? Well, it's not like I don't understand that there's sort of a hierarchy of life. I mean, a mm -hmm. human life, I'd say, is more important than a fish's life. Why? But well, because we have a higher we have a higher cognitive ability, we live longer, we're more sentient, um, we have a higher emotional range. Like just the impact on the the world that we can have is just so, greater than a fish. So looking like looking that. at that real quick, just just to kind of draw into there. So one thing that I get uncomfortable with when people make certain arguments is when you start to get into like really gray, arbitrary areas. When you say things like we are more intelligent or have more emotional intelligence, what? Why do you reach a certain level where all of a sudden that emotional or intellectual intelligence makes you worthy of life? But like, what what level? How does that magically? Like, what threshold do you cross that does that? Well, um, I think. I think we I think it's reasonable to say that all like if we can recognize that a creature is sentient and has or at least has some level of sentience and can experience pain and suffering I think to some extent it has a right to life but like where I draw the line is like okay what is the most reasonable way for me to exist in the world while causing uh, the least amount of suffering or death possible mm -hmm. uh, within reason. So, like, I'm not going to just go abandon civilization and live out in the woods just so that I can, like, avoid, I don't know, buying something on Amazon and then, like, the plane that it was shipped on hitting a bird. Like, I, I, I think that's unreasonable. But, like, it's... Like, I can just very easily choose not to consume animal products. Like, I can very easily choose not to buy meat from the grocery store. Uh, like, it's just a very reasonable common sense uh, situation where I don't have to support that sort of uh, pain, suffering, and death, and I can live quite comfortably. Now, it, now, if insects were to, like, infest my apartment, like termite, well, termites, cockroaches, or something, mm -hmm. I can recognize that they're sentient to a very limited extent, uh, but they're interfering with my well-being, and I think it's fine in that situation to exterminate those insects who, you know, are actually affecting my well-being. Like, what you're doing here is you're basically throwing out, like, every other, like, every animal in every situation saying, none of that shit matters because mm. social contract, I don't, I only care about people, whereas yeah. I think I have a much more common sense approach, and, like, I'm just taking context into account where, okay, like, I can recognize that most animals are sentient, they can experience pain and suffering, and I'll just do whatever I reasonably can to eliminate or reduce their pain and suffering, but, you know, in some situations you have to have a certain standard of well-being and you have to like exterminate cockroaches sometimes damn um like so yeah for, like for... basically basically what i want to say the main problem i have with you is mm -hmm. you're you're saying like instead of saying like like let's let's just do a common sense thing and try to reduce suffering you're just saying okay well it's either all or nothing if we can't eliminate all suffering then just fuck them all yeah, so, that's what I'm getting from so to speak to this, I, I don't believe in, in like reducing suffering of animals because um, I, I'm trying to make an argument that what, what I see as being is the most morally consistent argument. If you're talking, if your goal is to reduce the suffering of animals, then the only reason you would be interested in that is because you think that the suffering of animals is something that should be avoided. If you think the suffering of animals should be avoided, then I don't think there is any good argument that you can make in favor of eating meat. I think it makes you a hypocrite at that point because it's very possible to live off of a diet that involves no animal products whatsoever so i don't see how you could possibly be in favor of eating meat if you're also in favor of reducing suffering right if you've already admitted that killing animals for food is wrong how can you ever be in favor of it right so this is why my approach seems really all or nothing because i'm, I'm trying to be as consistent on this point as possible um and again like if you start to say things like well i don't think we should you know like torture animals like skin an animal like that's not okay so well why don't you think that's okay if that's why is it that that's not okay but killing an animal for food when you don't need to is okay right that seems really hypocritical to me Would, right, that, just so, 
to, just yeah. to be clear, just mm -hmm. to be clear. So are you saying animals should have no rights at all? And like the current uh, animal rights policies we have with regards to like humane slaughter, like we do have humane slaughter laws where yep. the animal has to be stunned before it gets its throat slit open, mm -hmm. um, like cruelty to pets, like you can't abuse your dog. Like you think all of those rights just that we give to animals shouldn't exist? Yeah, I think they're absurd. I think they're absurdly hypocritical. Um, I think it would be it would be similar to having like ethical treatments of slaves. Like we would never, ever, ever, ever accept these arguments for people. Why do we accept them for well, animals? What do you mean? Well, we have. Well, if you just read the Bible, like there is ethical treatment of slaves. Well, like, oh, well sure. I'm not religious. I'm sorry. I, I, so I'm well, sure. I know, and, I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm it, not it, talking about this from a religious perspective. Yeah, no. In, in the past, saying, there might be, but like, these laws. For, for what we decide right now, yeah, and sure, there were, I'm sure there were probably laws on how you should treat slaves in the 1800s and whatnot, but like, I, I'm not, but this kind of morality isn't something that I engage in, right? And today, with our current understanding of ethics, like, no, nobody would be okay with saying like, okay, well, I have a slave, you know, I have slaves that are humans and everything, um, but I treat them really nicely, you know, I don't torture them or anything, so that's kind of cool, right? Well, people go like, well, no, the fuck, that's slavery, that's fucked up that's wrong right i think it's really bizarre that we live in a world where um wh where you can get in trouble for kicking your dog like there's laws against that against that kind of animal cruelty but you know we you know lock up chickens and shit in coops for you know their entire fucking lives you know shitting out eggs and whatnot for human consumption like that seems really hypocritical to me as a it, vegan it that doesn't seem is. yeah so th well, this is why i say like i think most meat eaters are very fucking hypocritical or people will cry because of some fucking lion that gets shot you know an ocean away and, and then they go down to the store and they buy you know a ton of fucking ribeyes and shit for for dinner tonight like that seems really morally inconsistent to me um it is morally inconsistent and it's totally hypocritical i agree with you but again there's this all or nothing sort of mentality that you have where like why don't you even if it is hypocritical like mm -hmm. why don't you just see this as okay it's hypocritical but maybe this is a step towards something better like if we can give rights to dogs to like make sure like it's illegal to abuse your dog like beat the shit out of them like why isn't that okay let's build upon this let's extend that to other animals or that's... let's make for, for me personally, that's not something I would ever build upon. That's a decision for me. If I decided at one point that animals, we'll say with sentience is, is kind of your argument, with sentience or a certain level of metacognizance or intelligence or whatever, are worthy of protection, that's an all or nothing thing. That's like a, okay, well, you know, I've made this decision. I'm a vegan because I'm not going to sit here and protect the rights of some animals and then fucking massively slaughter and eat other ones. It's like an insanely hypocrite. Like I could never feel like, like I'm being a moral or ethical person. It just feels so inconsistent to me. Okay. Right. Um, and I, I imagine, like, as a vegan, like, I, I'm sure you see that, too. Like, that has to be really irritating when you see somebody, like, loving and petting their dog and cat, and they think they're so cool, and then they run and they eat, like, a giant fucking steak and shrimp dinner or something. Like, that has to be, like, hypocritical as fuck, right? Well, well totally. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, the thing here, too, like, you don't think it's sort of a better perspective to have where, okay, let's give rights to even if we're not planning on building upon it like mm -hmm. let's give rights to dogs or cats or you know pets where it it's not we you know draw a line in the sand it's illegal to abuse them don't you think that's sort of a better like a better sort of moral or legal structure to have than just say fuck all animals just do whatever the hell we want to them well so i would have to ask why I mean, we already own an animals are essentially, and well, I know a lot of people get mad, but animals are really slaves, right? That's what they are. We lock them up in our house. We don't much. let them roam anywhere. We keep them inside. We usually feed them shitty diets of fake food. And, and then we force them to stay around to, to entertain ourselves, right? They stay because well, again, we feed them, right? Like, Well, again, like, are you actually saying that causing less harm to animals isn't a benefit correct. to anyone? Correct. That, that, well, yeah, that's even the sense. to them. That, yeah, that, well, I mean, maybe to them, but I'm not concerned with them, right? I, I think that it sounds extreme, but I think this is the only reasonable stance to take. Again, because if you start to make concessions that, well, maybe we shouldn't be mean to animals, then it's like, okay, well, why are you eating them, right? I don't think you can sit in a gray area here. I think it has to be all or nothing. I don't, for the record, I don't like vegetarians either because I think that sits on a really weird line. Like, I don't know how you okay. can make the decision to be a vegetarian and not just be a vegan. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, the thing with the uh, social contract argument you're making too, mm -hmm. um, have you ever owned any pets? Yeah, I have a cat right now. <laughs> Okay, like, okay, maybe I think cats will eat your corpse as soon as you die. They don't your really face, give yeah. much of a shit about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but... Um, I'm a dog like, person, though. I've had dogs in the past. Yeah. 
Yeah, like if you've ever owned a dog, um, they really grow to love you. You haven't like you haven't actually noticed that. I mean, like I feel like this is getting into more kind of emotional territory. Well, I no, mean, no, no, no. it's not really emotional because they are sort of forming a social contract with you. Because you know, a wild feral dog, if like they'll just rip you to pieces. Mm -hmm. But your own, you know, family pet, like your pet dog. They really grow to love you, and uh, they'd never do that to you. You don't really consider that as some sort of social contract. Like, obviously, it's not to the same extent a human will form a social contract with you, but... I mean, you don't... at the risk of sounding colder than the fucking North Pole, like, I, they, do they grow to love you? I mean, to some extent, sure, but anytime you keep an animal around and you provide it with enough food and shelter and, and you hang out with it, like, it, it will begin to foster these feelings, right? Like, I mean, you can well, get a guinea pig. You can, you can make that same argument with human children. Like, if you don't fucking take care of them, they'll grow to hate you. Well, sure, like, but, hum but human children can grow to respect the social contract, right? Which was kind of my central axiom for why I respect humans and not animals, right? Even for children well, that aren't capably, uh, that aren't currently capable of respecting social contract, they have the intelligence to grow to respect it. Well, again, like, if you don't, like, if you don't treat a child well, like, if you don't take care of it, don't feed it, mm -hmm. it's just going to grow to like totally resent you and if a kid is brought up in that sort of environment you really think they're going to grow up to respect social contracts like these are the type of kids who become insane fucking psychopaths sure i mean i would consider that to be a fault of the parent but but i would also agree with you as well again if somebody comes up to me on the street and I, say i have an ability to flash and look at his entire life and i see that for whatever due to years of neglect and abuse he's grown up to not be a respectful member of society that doesn't change my stance on him if i think he's going to hurt me or fuck with my shit then you know you take appropriate action you, you wouldn't extend to him the same respects and rights or whatever that you would another more reciprocating human being right but the issue here is um so do you like the issue i have here is it, it seems like you're sort of ignoring the fact that animals like can to some extent have sort of a social contract with you like even even if even if you think okay it's not real love they're just like the only reason they like you is because you fed them and gave them a warm home and everything. Mm -hmm. um, don't you think just the fact that they'd sort of return the favor to you, like be affectionate towards you, not bite you because you give affection to them. Like you don't think that gives them any sort of right to any kind of respect? Um, not not particularly, no. I don't think that, that the, the fact that something is grateful that you feed it, I don't think necessarily entitles you to the same rights that humans have or, or any level of rights that would be similar to a human okay so like even if like so eve you you just think anyone should be able to like torture their dog to death pretty much yeah because it's a possession and you don't extend the same rights to the animal that you would to humans yeah okay and if you if your next door neighbor if you found out that your next door neighbor buys dogs tortures them to death, like skins them alive, uh, you wouldn't think that person should be locked up? Uh, well, I mean, I might for a host of other reasons. But, um, well, exactly. Well, exactly. Well, 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 um, well but, but this gets into more like because typically people that like murder or torture animals have severe empathy issues. I think it's natural for human beings to um, there's a word I'm looking for anthropomorphize. There's a word I'm looking for where you basically you assign human traits to animals because some of the ways they, they act are superficially similar to humans. So if somebody's like torturing animals on the daily, there's probably something fucked with them mentally. But but again, like t to the argument that you just said, like, would you be uncomfortable? And, and okay. I know like everybody in your chat is like, I would be uncomfortable if there was a guy, you know, torturing animals and shit you know next door to me people will say that and even meat eaters will say that but then they will go and they will buy food that they don't know how those cows are brought up they don't know how those chickens are brought up some of those farms are fucking horrible places and they don't give a fuck that they're you know that they're stuck on their feet all day or injected full of hormones or whatever and they'll eat them and they don't really care so i feel like this is more like an emotional argument that that meat eaters are inconsistent on okay um I'm getting the feeling that you're either not being totally genuine with what you're saying, like you don't actually believe what you're saying, or you may just actually be a sociopath. Um, I, so, like, so th this is kind of the, the this is kind of the problem. So, with, well, with animals, can I, can I oh, just yeah, ask go. you something? Yeah, can I just go, ask go. you something. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you have it in you to torture a dog? Like, would you feel ashamed of yourself? Would you like even just kill a dog? Like, do you do you think you have it in you to do that to an animal? Um, 
Ugh, I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. I guess if I had to. I don't know. I've never really thought about it before. Have you ever killed an animal before? No, I don't. I enjoy shooting and everything, too, but I don't really like hunting. I don't think any of that is very entertaining to me. Like, okay, so you've actually never killed an animal before? Like, like I'm sure we've all killed spiders or something. Yeah, maybe I've, you, like, you... ran over. I mean, I slow down if I see, like, a bunny crash in the road or whatever. Like, well, I don't why get is that? Because <laughs> I don't get enjoyment out of killing animals and shit. It's not okay, that... well, if, like, I, I think that's telling a bit because, again, this makes me feel like you're not actually being genuine with what you're saying because if you're saying... Who gives a fuck what happens to any animals? They can't reciprocate rights. Well, why would you slow down when you see like a rabbit or a bird or or a squirrel on the road? So, I, I feel like you have to be careful when you go down this road because you can very easily find people who do get like. What if I were to tell you? Well, actually, yes, I love hunting. It's actually really enjoyable for me to hunt. Like, there's something beautiful about seeing the life flicker away from an animal's eyes or something, right? Like, if I were to answer like this, then. You, you kind of like run into a dead end for me personally i just don't I'm, I'm not a big like i don't like killing things at all it's just not something that's very entertaining to me that doesn't mean i'm assigning like a moral weight to it if i had a friend that was a hunter or whatever i wouldn't think less of them you know it's just for me personally it's just not something that i enjoy at all but but when you run down the emotional or quote-unquote common sense arguments you have to be careful because you know a lot of the same people i'm going to pull the same thing you did to no bullshit right a lot of the same people would say the same thing about black people for slavery right like well you know are they really human you know do they really feel the same way that we feel like i mean just look at them common sense you know like i think that it's really you have to be really careful going down those emotional routes i seem like i'm being ungenuine because i'm trying to be as like rigidly logical as possible but i'm not trying to give you the impression that i will like go outside and look for dogs to skin because i have nothing better to do with my time i'm not uh, i'm not saying that yeah. um like when we create laws like don't murder don't rape mm -hmm. don't steal um I don't think the I don't think most people think of it in the in the way you're thinking of it. For sure, like, I agree. You're basically you're basically you're it's just pure cold hard logic like okay, what's the best most efficient way we can exist in society and, you know, be as productive as possible. Like most people don't see it that way. Most people say like see it in a very emotional empathetic sort of way like I agree. Do I want to be killed? No, like it's basically a golden rule sort of thing. Don't treat others the way you wouldn't want to be treated. Mm -hmm. um, that, like, and again, I think you do think in that sort of way. And I just think you're trying to be as logically consistent as possible so that you can justify eating meat without being an absolute hypocrite. Because again, you were saying if you're driving a car and you see a rabbit crossing the road or say like a squirrel or a dog or whatever, you slow down and try to avoid running it over. Like, why would you inconvenience, your, your, inconvenience yourself like that? Well, like, I mean, if I saw like a tumbleweed rolling across the road, I'd probably slow down too because I don't want to like fuck my tire or my car up or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think that that's like a good litmus test for like what are your actual like moral foundations if you don't, you know, run over an animal and cause it to explode on the road and fuck your tire and your car up. Like, well, like, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's like the way to, I don't think that's a good way to like attack my. Okay. Um, assuming, let's say you're driving a tank. Mm hmm. Okay. And you saw like, I don't know, bunny or a squirrel or something crossing the road. Would you slow down to not run over that animal? <laughs> if I'm driving a tank, I, I mean, I, why am I driving a tank? If we're in like well, a war zone, I'm probably just well, fucking going through. Like, I don't Well, what I'm trying, like I, what the point I'm trying to make, I'm just trying to figure out mm -hmm. whether or not you actually do on some level care about animals or if you're actually being genuine because it, it's actually starting to seem like you're not being totally genuine with me here uh because like you admit that you wouldn't you're not really interested in just running over animals y you you would sort of inconvenience yourself a little bit to avoid causing you know suffering yeah, but and death. i, I, I well extent. but it's not to avoid suffering and death I'm not, i don't really care i just i just wouldn't do it because i don't feel like running over an animal i wouldn't run over anything i think you're i think you're reading a little bit too much into it like I, i'm not well, like avoiding it because like i'm thinking you... like the bunny is running home to its children okay, or well, something right? well if you knew that it couldn't possibly harm the vehicle you're in or like inconvenience you in any way like running the thing over it wouldn't fuck up your tires or something like driving a tank would you actually bulldoze over a rabbit or a squirrel or you know anything that's on the road i mean i don't i well let's so i don't like littering or fucking up like the environment either like i don't like throwing shit around i mean but let's assume that i didn't care about any of that let's assume i didn't care how the road looked or whatever there was a magical street cleaner at the end of the day then yeah i guess i would it wouldn't really bother me
You would. You, you yeah. just run over an animal, even yeah. though, like, if you just slow down a little bit, it could just wander off, and then it'd be perfectly fine. Correct. And this is, and and again, and and I, I know I understand that, like, it sounds like I'm being really extreme, but I I I agree with you that I consider ninety nine point nine 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 percent of meat eaters to be complete and total fucking hypocrites. So I'm giving you what I believe to be the most morally and logically consistent platform possible. I'm not going to sit here and defend the rights of some animals and, and then say that we should eat meat. I don't think that position is defensible I, and i will tear apart any meat eater that wants to talk about well you should respect bunnies or deer or dogs or cats but then on the other hand say also i eat fucking tons of chickens and, and steak all the time like i don't think that's a legitimate argument i think that's totally unfounded and completely hypocritical in my opinion okay um it, it's an interesting perspective i don't think i've actually met anyone who gave this sort of argument before but what i'm still not really like, I still don't entirely understand your position here because, again, you're – it's like you're just arbitrarily placing ultimate value on social contract, but you're ignoring, like, actual empathy, which I think does matter. Like, the actual outcome of your actions, how this affects other beings. Like, so I, I don't th understand this is... why that doesn't matter to you at all. So you phrase this as, I put arbitrary value on social contract while ignoring empathy. But my argument would be, I think I've reasonably defended the importance of social contract, and I would argue that you place arbitrary value on empathy. Like, why is your your um, your defense of empathy less, ar less arbitrary than my defense of social contract? Like, I feel like I've rationalized social contract. Can you tell me why you feel empathy is a really important basis to build your moral system around? Well, because it actually considers outcome, whereas yours doesn't. It, it's... Well, what do you mean by that? Mine considers outcome. It's the outcome of, of how people function in society, right? I don't kill you, so you don't kill me. The golden right. rule well, reciprocation. It, it, it's entirely anthropocentric. Like, why can't we extend empathy towards animals at all? And again, this really does come back around to humans, because if we're not going to extend empathy to animals, like, you really think that people who just torture and kill dogs for fun you don't think there should be some sort of social contract where you'd actually be breaking a social contract with another human like you don't think there should be any legal consequences to that because obviously somebody who who do that is seriously fucked up and i think there should be some legal consequences to doing that like outside of like me just saying oh, oh shit you harmed animals it's like like no this person's fucking dangerous. There's something wrong with them. And like there it's a danger to humans as well, not just animals. Like who the fuck would torture and kill a dog? Like who would skin a dog alive? Yeah, but like you kind of just answer that in and of itself like if i were to if i was worried about somebody you know like torturing and killing dogs it's not because they're killing dogs it's because they represent a threat to humans as well right i wouldn't be concerned about the animal right. killing well i think both i think I think both of it is important. I think well, of course, because um, you're a vegan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I understand that. Well, that's I think point most, of view, but... not even just because I'm vegan. Like, uh -huh. really, your perspective is incredibly rare. I don't think I've ever met anyone who is using the same sort of logic and argument you're making. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. Again, I, I I can't stress enough how much I hate the average person that eats meat. Like some like a, a dumb fuck, like no bullshit, trying to justify their meat eating. Like I do believe it has to be all or nothing. Like um, you're you're literally like you're literally talking about ninety nine percent of people who yep. agree with me, and yep. like that includes non vegans. It, like the only people who wouldn't are sociopaths or people who are like just being dishonest sort of like no bullshit sure I, I, well i don't think no bullshit is dishonest i think he's just very stupid um I like he is he yeah. is he is pretty dishonest but oh, he i don't might think be, he, he's I... taken it as far as you did he he did agree that needless suffering is bad yeah so um it, it, i guess if i can um if, if i can kind of back this up i think there's kind of like a like there's like one central point that um that, that we kind of come to that we kind of gotten past and i think it has to do with why do we value the um the sentience of animals why is that something because this is ultimately what separates the like animals from plants for you right so i think that's kind of what the whole central thing is like is, is the sentience okay. of animals something to be valued and if so why well like it really comes down to to empathy like i i can understand that another being uh has wants to live i can understand that it can feel pain and suffering like why would i want to cause pain and suffering to that animal when i wouldn't want that for myself 
Well, so like the and, desire to live and all of that, like these are things that are just necessary functions of a biological organism, right? There is no biological right. thing that is not going to want to live because it wouldn't exist. Well, just right? because, well, just because it's biological, that doesn't mean it doesn't matter. For sure, but just like, because okay, it's like, no, no, I, I would, I would, well, I would agree with you there. I would say it's neutral, but just because it's biological doesn't mean it matters either. either well, right? you know, I would I, like you could argue that the the social contracts that human beings make, it, it's sort of biologically wired in us. You, yep. Like you could argue that. For like, sure. Does that make it not matter? Well, I, so I would say it does matter because you're human, right? It's intrinsic to you as, as a being, right? The, the social contract and the existence of civilization all revolves around you as a human. Whatever animals think or feel is not really relevant to you as a human or to human civilization. So because you are human, right? That That's like that hard line in the sand that I can draw. That That's why I try to stay away from like arbitrary definitions. Like because you are human and because you are interested in the existence of other humans, because you want them to be interested in your existence as a human, right? That's where the social contract comes from. Okay, um, I don't think we're going to get much further here because mm -hmm. we're sort of arguing in circles, but um, sure. just to sort of wrap things up, I just have a few like other questions. Yeah. Um, so would you say it's like if the entire world could go vegan, we'd eliminate animal agriculture, would you say that's a better way of life than, you know, what we're doing now? Um, I mean, there are other arguments you could start to dip into um well I'm, I'm and that's what sure. i want to get into later like yeah. health and environment but so like, like i mean from a moral perspective do you like no i would, I would have to causing say causing less harm i would, would have to say no i would have to say no to that because if you're, i say yes to that and i still eat meat i'm essentially being a hypocrite right i don't think you can like skirt that line there if i would if i genuinely believed that animal suffering was wrong then that would compel me to be a vegan. I, I I couldn't go and eat meat, and then on the other hand, say I wish that we stopped eating meat. Like that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so you're you're basically saying you're completely neutral and indifferent with respect to like the morality of causing animal suffering and death in the animal agriculture industry, or choosing to go vegan and not causing that suffering and death. Like it literally makes no difference to you. Correct. Okay. Um. All right. Um, I guess we should let's talk about how this affects people then, because I think this will be a little like a little more interesting to you. Like, let's talk about uh, like health. Sure. Uh, so how the animal agriculture industry affects uh, health. These probably won't be as interesting. So w when you talk about veganism, I think that the strongest arguments that you can make in favor of veganism are the moral ones. I think that everything else gets a lot more wishy-washy because when you're going to start talking about things like environment or health, people already make suboptimal decisions in these regards anyway, even being meat eaters. I don't know how you morally compel somebody to choose a more optimal path for life. We could start, I guess, with the health reasons if you want. But... Well, uh, the thing is if we could just eliminate the animal agriculture industry mm -hmm. um like the vast majority of people they wouldn't have access to meat dairy and eggs mm -hmm. um i guess people could still hunt but you know it, it it wouldn't support you know the majority of people like the majority of people wouldn't have any access to animal like animal products sure um like unless everyone just starts eating and in like a tremendous amount of junk food like oreos and vegan ice cream and vegan donuts potato chips like assuming that most people follow like primarily a whole foods vegan diet like they switch steak out for lentils and potatoes and stuff like that mm -hmm. um you'd greatly improve the health of the population like you'd reduce like you'd at least be cutting heart disease in half mm -hmm. so like you don't see that as a benefit so i mean it definitely is a benefit but any argument that you can make towards getting rid of meat, I could probably make 10 times over getting rid of sugar, right? Sugar is, is a cancer in Western diet. It's one of the worst fucking things that, that I think has happened to us as a species. Um, you, you would improve everybody's quality of life, their diets immensely by, by trying to ax out as much sugar. We have sugar in fucking everything these days. But just because I can say that cutting sugars would make us healthier, I don't know if that makes it a moral imperative to do so, right? You get similar arguments you can make for exercise as well, right? Getting out and running every day, even if you don't lift or whatever, is going to improve your health immensely. But I don't know if that makes it like a moral imperative to do so. Um, like, I think people should have freedom of choice. Like, I don't think anybody should be forced to live a healthy lifestyle if they don't want to. But... Like, again, you're obviously not going to agree with this because you literally do not give a shit about <laughs> reducing animal suffering. But, yeah. like, that's always the point I make. Like, we could improve health. 
and even if you don't care about health, you'd still be saving animals. Yeah. So or again, we kind of we're kind yeah. of running back to the moral argument, which I think is the strongest right. argument. I think it's the only one that's really relevant because there's a million things that we can do that would make our, well, cars are something. Even the United States, well, there's a lot of people that could get by driving bikes or riding bikes without having to get a car. A lot more people could do it, but they don't. And we were killing the environment and everything and animals as well, right? And, well, and protection and all that. The thing is, like again, this is very all or nothing sort of approach you're having. Mm -hmm. like, like I, 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 it's really hard for me to wrap my head around how you can just flat out say I. It literally makes no difference if you, you know, kill a billion, like fifty billion animals each year. Mm -hmm. Like if you could choose to not kill over fifty billion animals each year and improve the health of the population, even if even if all the other you know lifestyle factors like eating sugar, not exercising enough, even if you can't do anything about that. Like, how is that not a huge benefit to cut out animal product consumption, even if people still aren't going to live, like, totally optimal lives? Uh, that would still uh, reduce chronic disease and death in the human population, which, like, I think you would agree that is a benefit. And you would be saving a tremendous amount of animals from, like, horrible suffering and death. Yeah, so I mean, you, so again, because if we're, if we're disregarding the moral arguments and we get rid of the saving animals from death part, what you're essentially asking me is, should we ax an entire industry to improve the health of some people? And this these go into like kind of these fundamental questions of freedom of choice and whatnot, right? Should you have the choice to, to drink alcohol? Should you have the choice to smoke cigarettes? Should you have the choice to lead an unhealthy life? Um, I think you probably should. And at least at this point in society, that's the decision that we've made. Um, if we if we decide that, you know, like, um, you know, maybe people shouldn't be left to those decisions decisions on, on can you act in ways that are suboptimal to your health, then in that case, I would probably agree. Like, yeah, maybe axing animal uh, agriculture is probably a good idea, or at least severely curtailing it. Um, but but it doesn't seem like that's how we make any decision in society. Like, sh should everybody be compelled to run, you know, one mile a day? Should everybody be compelled to bike a certain amount? Like, none of these are, like, moral well, imperatives that we place on people. Sorry. Well, the thing is, like, you're talking about personal rights. Mm -hmm. This is more about, um, like, corporate and business rights. What do you like, mean by that? Well, you're not necessarily taking away people's right to eat meat. Like they could still shoot a squirrel, say, or go hunting. Mm -hmm. But um, you'd stop, you'd prevent it from being a business. Like any, like nobody can actually profit off of it. Start like, you know, a farm or sell meat. Um, you don't think that would be a good thing? Well, you're kind of doing the same thing, just one step removed, right? That would be like saying, like, I'm not going to make guns illegal, but I am going to make it illegal to sell a gun. Now, if people want to go into the back and, and get a smith or a forge and, you know, start harvesting or, or start crafting their own weapons and forging their own weapons, that's fine. I'm not making it illegal, but I am going to make Like, I think that you kind of effectively do the same thing, right? You're cutting off access for tons of people to ever have access to this. I think it's more or less the same thing. I don't think the distinction matters much. Okay. Like, um... Yeah, again, um, I, you're either just a an actual sociopath, or um, I, I, I like I'm still getting the feeling that you're kind of being dishonest with I'm, me. I'm not, like, I'm not. I'm really not. Someone in your chat said, "Would I rather be? I would rather be a sociopath than a hypocrite. I really would. Like, um, I do a lot of these kinds of discussions, and I put a fair amount of thought into this. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I, I really do think that veganism, especially with the advent of like lab grown meat, will probably will probably be a thing in like 50 years i'm still kind of on the fence about it but um i i'm, I'm really trying to be as morally consistent as possible because and... on all of the things that you're talking to me about like meat eaters are very very hypocritical about it and i'm not going to jump and defend like some animals and, and not all of them it doesn't make sense to me sorry go ahead. and from a moral perspective you don't see any benefit to uh eating lab-grown meat compared to raising meat in agriculture and you know obviously causing suffering to animals and then killing them well again so I, I don't have a compelling reason to know to believe that i should be concerned with the suffering of animals right that's the thing that i'm missing it is that if that if that thing was there and you know i could plug that in then I, everything else would fall in line to point towards veganism right if you believe that the suffering of animals is something that should be avoided but i but i don't and i don't have a compelling argument for why it should be okay so you're saying suffering and quality of life doesn't matter it because it doesn't affect you no for for animals because because it's just not something we're concerned with we, we would never well, go into like concerned. oh well yeah well sure sure that i'm that i'm concerned with yeah as a human right we would never well, go into like a, a forest or, or a rainforest or some shit and and try to find animals and, and hire their quality of life or protect them from other predators or anything like that we would never be concerned with this kind of a thing right 
Well, again, um, it seems like the only reason you're not concerned with it is just because it doesn't affect you. Um, to some extent, yeah, in a roundabout way, sure. The, the self-interested thing, the way that the social contract works is ultimately about selfishness, right? We engage in social contract with others so that they engage in it with us, right? Right. So, like, you're, you're, you're actually suggesting that um, you're basically saying, like, even quality of life doesn't matter. Yes. Unless, yeah. unless it, it personally yeah. affects you. Well, or another human, yeah. Well, again, like you said, social contracts really, like, it's the only reason you're in a social contract to begin with is ultimately to benefit yourself. Yeah, correct. Okay, so if you could wave a magic wand to, like, stop human suffering, would mm -hmm. you do it? Um, it, yeah, for sure. Okay, well, why wouldn't you do that for animals? Because I, like, like, I have no compelling well, reason to care about animals. Well, no, 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 no. Like, again, like, you don't have any compelling reason to prevent the suffering of humans, really, outside of, like, social contract, just so it doesn't happen to you. But I'm saying, if you were, like, a god, mm -hmm. and you were just observing this, mm -hmm. you, like, you would end suffering of humans. Like, if you could just wave a magic wand and just stop all people from suffering... Why wouldn't you just do that to animals? Like, it seems like you do understand empathy. Like, you do sympathize with people when they're suffering. Why don't you just sympathize with animals? So if there is a God being, what will give you the perfect possible universe, a God being offers you the decision to come up and say, I, or, or to acknowledge, I want to end the suffering of all human beings, right? I, I would say, I would go up and I would say, yes, I do. And I would hope that any other human being, because of the social contract, would engage in a similar deal with any kind of omnipotent being. Now, if a deer were to approach a god figure with that decision, I think the deer would probably just take a shit and walk off. Or a bear, or a dolphin, or any other kind of animal, because they don't think they well, have the same it doesn't kind of... Have... It doesn't have the cognitive ability to yeah. understand what's going on. Exactly. Like, so this is kind of where I have language. Yeah. So that, well, and I'm not even saying they would have to say it, but I'm just saying like these are these are beings that can't even conceptualize uh, right society. So yeah, I would be interested in ending all human suffering. I would hope that every human is interested in ending all human suffering, but I don't think that any animal is concerned with ending any human suffering. Well, like again, they like they're just they don't have the intelligence we do, so it's hard for them to even imagine this. But they do like they do have empathy to some extent. Well, everything like, has um, empathy. It's a biological process that helps us get along with family. Well, right. right. But like I'm saying, just because these animals like can't form a social contract with you and maybe don't necessarily care about you, like you can still understand that they're living beings that can feel pain. Like, I, I'm just I'm just wondering why, like, if you were a god being who could uh -huh. just wave a magic wand and stop all suffering, like, why wouldn't you do that? Like, so, it, uh, is it literally just totally indifferent to you? Like, you, if you could just stop all suffering, like human and animal suffering, like, you just wouldn't do it to animals, but you would do it to people? Yeah. I, I'm not even sure how the stopping all animal suffering would work. Like, what about, like, the well, carnivores it, and stuff? Like, would they not eat other animals, or...? Like, it, it's a magic wand. Like... The ecosystem would still magically exist. Uh, it's a, it's a like a weird hypothetical. I'm, yeah. I, no, like, and, and, I'm, and I'm trying, I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to give you as much leeway on the hypothetical as possible while, without missing the point of it. But like for humans, like humans could probably exist with no suffering by via agriculture, right? But like, how does a wolf like are they going to start farming right. or eating well, plants only? Like, what I what I'm basically trying to get here is. I'm trying to figure out if you do actually care about people on an empathetical level and not just because you, you know, you adhere to a social contract and the only reason you treat people with, you know, respect and dignity and you respect their rights to, you know, to life. Uh, is it just because you're trying to protect yourself? Yeah, I'm or sorry. Do you so you actually have empathy for you, another person. I, I'm not going to lie to you about anything you ask me. I swear. So you can just ask me. Like, do I care about people on an empathetical level? The answer is no. That's that's not where any of my morals or ethics come from. It has nothing to do with empathy for other human beings, and it has everything to do with with social contract and everything that I can reason out from there. It, it has okay. nothing to do with empathy. Yeah. Have you ever uh, had a girlfriend <laughs> or been in a loving relationship? Like, <laughs> believe it or not, yeah, I have somehow. Yeah, you have. Yeah. But and but I, I don't think out. I don't think these I don't think this argument is going to help your your um... no like it's just very fascinating to me like, sure 
I, I'm just I'm trying to be I'm trying to be as logically consistent as possible again. I, like I'm just empathizing that, or I'm uh, sympathizing. Uh, oh God, there's a word emphasizing. I'm sorry, I'm emphasizing that. I'm just trying to be as logically consistent as possible in this argument. So. Okay. <clears throat> um. Hmm. I'm kind of at a loss for what to say to you, mm -hmm. because like it, it, like everything I like I come to you, you're you're basically like yeah I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, for in terms <laughs> like, of like as I think that, like, right. from your point of view, I think that the easiest way to attack me is I think that anybody that owns and loves an animal or a pet or is concerned with, with the suffering of animals, like if you go to a zoo and you're sad that an animal is trapped in a cage or whatever, I think that all of these people should be vegan. I don't see how, like, that. Those these are really easy positions. That's, I feel like I could argue in favor of veganism very, very, very easily against the average meat eater because it's, I don't okay. see how you can possibly love some animals and think it's okay to massively harvest and slaughter others. It doesn't make any sense to me. Right, um... You did say you owned you own a cat and yeah. uh, you have owned dogs. So like, were these w w you? Did you buy your cat or did you? Like... Well, my cat belongs to my girlfriend, and then my a dog belongs okay. to my ex girlfriend. Okay, so you never actually bought an animal yourself. Personally, no. I don't. I don't want the responsibility of taking care of one. But I. I, I right, mean, I enjoy right. animals. Like. Okay. Um. All right. So like, I was gonna ask, like, would you treat it any differently if? You know, you were the one who went out and bought that animal, or if you adopted it, like would you would you treat it differently than how you're treating it now? Yeah, probably. I would probably take care of it a lot more. I mean, I take care. Really, it sounds really fucked up, but like I bought a new car and I take care of that thing way better than I would any rental car. But I would view an animal as a possession, just like a vehicle, right, or a computer, or what any other thing like that, an instrument. Right. Like I'm just wondering. Um... So, assuming this wasn't your girlfriend's cat, or, like, let's say your girlfriend died, or she left you, and you were left with that cat, um, would you treat it any differently than how you're treating it now? Um, I, I imagine probably. What, what are, you, are you trying? Well, I don't understand what we're getting like, at. I'm, like, what I'm trying, like, what I'm basically trying to ask you is, um... Like, would you just lock it in a box, basically? I mean, I enjoy the cat. Like, I get I get personal enjoyment out of it being here. If it ever became an inconvenience, then I guess maybe I would give it to the Humane Society or something. But I don't feel like a moral obligation to keep it. But I, I would keep Why it. Why would you give it to the Humane Society? Um, I don't know, because they can give it to someone else, I guess. Or they eventually put it down, I guess. But but I, I don't have, like, a... I don't Why would like you a, just put it down yourself? Um... I mean, I guess I could. I don't know. It seems like a waste of a thing. Okay, so even if, like, say you had, you could see the future and you knew no one would get that cat. Like, uh -huh. maybe, like, maybe you, it's just a really ugly cat. You, you He's just not ugly. Now. Well, but no, I know what you mean. Yeah, say no one else would get it. Then, yeah, I guess I would, sure. I, I wouldn't have a problem putting it down. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. If if no one else is gonna get it, if it was just gonna sit like in a, in the in the pound or whatever, and no one was ever gonna get it or whatever, then yeah, sure. Okay. All right. This was uh, this is weird fucking conversation. I, I didn't expect for you to come out with this. Sure. I, I understand, but do, do you agree? You would you must agree that my position is the only reasonable one for a meat eater, right? Do you do you agree with that or? It, it drives me crazy when people try to like ride the line between liking some animals and not liking others. It seems really strange to me. Um, I don't know if I'd consider your position the most reasonable one. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, like, it's strange. Um, like, I would have considered the most reasonable argument would come from somebody who's just uninformed. Like, there are people who Hitler. genuinely believe that humans absolutely need to eat meat for health. Okay. And the most reasonable arguments I've seen coming from that perspective are, like, okay, we do need to, like, drastically reduce animal agriculture we need to eat way less meat to be more ethical we need to raise these animals and like you know an open farm and grass-fed kind of situation like that's what i'd consider the most reasonable argument but like those people are just uninformed i guess like I... with you it's just it's weird like what i consider unreasonable about your argument is you literally do not give a fuck about uh, the outcome of the situation. Like you're saying suffering doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, death doesn't matter. All that matters is my own personal well-being. And what determines my own personal well-being is a social contract. 
And since animals can't have a social contract with me, like, fuck them. I, I, I literally don't care if they suffer and die. Sure. Like, that, that's what I find unreasonable. Yeah, I, I understand that. I, so I guess I would, I would take issue with people be, because these are arguments that you would never make for human beings. When you t- I'm sorry. When you talk about, like, um, nice ways to kind of enslave animals and then harvest their organs for food, um, I, I don't consider that to be something that we would ever accept for treatment of humans. Um, for instance, there is no ethical argument you could provide really for slavery right now in the West, right? Well, you know, like, I have slaves, but, you know, they have a really nice bedroom. I give them toys, you know, every month I, I provide them free internet access they've got wi-fi when they're out working in the fields like nobody would ever accept these arguments they would say dude slavery is a moral s- sin like you cannot do this this is disgusting you cannot enslave people so like if a meat eater wants to say like well i'll eat meat and stuff if it comes from cows that are you know like their bellies are rubbed every day and you know they're, they're grass-fed and all of that like okay well that's strange so you, you are acknowledging then that torturing and killing animals is wrong but you can kill them if you do it in certain ways like that seems really hypocritical to me Right. Um, I do have something to say about that. Uh-huh. Uh, like, if you look at a religious text, like you know, the the Old Testament, for instance, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of like very strange uh, ethical rules involving slavery. And what's especially weird is that supposedly the Israelites were enslaved by the Egyptians for the longest time, mm-hmm. and then when they were finally free they allowed for slavery so, yeah but like, i mean i wouldn't i would reject well, i i don't like any well, sorry, well, well well just let me carry on here mm-hmm. um and they have rules regarding like how you can keep slaves like there's a very strange rule where if you beat your slave and he dies within a day or two then you're guilty of murder but you know if he survives it's fine to beat your slave if he's being disobedient um, like there's stuff like that. Like basically, there are general rules around how you can treat your slave, even though this is hypocritical. Like it's very, very strange how you'd think slavery is okay, but you have to treat your slave, you know, in a certain way. Like people, even in that situation, value empathy to some extent. Like I think there, like, and I think even you'd admit there's a biological reason for empathy. Like, it does help us even create these social contracts. Yeah, so, I, like, I kind of, I understand what you're saying. This is, um... So, like, the, the thing is, like, the, the problem I have here is basically you're saying empathy doesn't matter, and I think it does. I think it's, like, totally necessary for us to even respect social contracts. So, in, in looking at this, I think that you can derive a social contract using only only logic. I think as, as edgy as that sounds, right? I think that you can logically derive a social contract without needing to rely on emotions at all. The problem that I have um, when, when you kind of make this, um, I don't want to say like a, like an appeal to nature, but when you talk about like it's in our nature to to be empathetic and emotional, I, I agree that that is true. But like I can point to another system that exists that's largely built out of emotion that's totally dysfunctional. The um, the prison system in the United States is built largely largely around emotion, right? If you, if you ask somebody, like, what's the purpose of prison? Well, it's retribution. It's Or they won't say retribution. They'll say it's justice or whatever, right? But it's really revenge, right? That's what a lot of the principles of, of justice in the United States are more or less built around revenge when that doesn't logically make any sense at all, right? Prisons should exist for rehabilitation. The fact right. that we have insanely high recidiviz- recidivization, I think that's the right word, rates, um, people that go back to jail after coming out, um, the, the, the three strikes and you're out rule, the disproportionate sentencing between black people and white people, um, the, the strange ways that we sentence people to, to, to crimes um, based on how much money they have for a lawyer. Right? All of our all of our kind of prison and, and lawyer and, and all of that shit, all of that is kind of built around this weird emotional construct of like we need to get even with people that do bad things in society. And that doesn't really serve society at all. Now, we have an emotional drive to, to get even with people that wrong us, sure, but that doesn't contribute to a better society. The prison system in the United States sure as fuck isn't helping us at all. It's a giant money sink. It probably hurts people more than it helps them because when you lock people up, it, it fucks the rest of their life up if they've got prison charges for stupid stupid shit like weed or whatever on their record but like i would point to something like the prison well, system to say like well look here's an example of us being emotional and it being fucking horrible for us you know? i don't think that is an example of us being emotional i think that's an example of us being greedy and not actually caring about empathy because the like the people who are running the prison system they're making a shit ton of money off of it and the reason there's bullshit like three strike laws in florida 
It's because people are profiting off of the private prison but system. But that, but that's not true. When when politicians get up and they make these arguments, now I I will I will tell you that is what happens, right, with private prisons and shit for sure. But when politicians get up and and they have to argue for in favor of prisons, right? What are the arguments they always use? They're always emotional ones. We need to do this for the children. Um, when you talk about like, hey, maybe we need to have better ways of reintegrating people into society. What do they say? Oh, so you want to let murderers back out of prison? You want to let rapists come out and rape well, your daughter? Well, that's what they say, but yeah, that's the, not necessarily the intent. It might like not that, be the intent, but the intention in that, that's the boat that it kind of sails on. That's how it's sold to people in society is emotionally, right? Like this is these are people kind of manipulating your emotions. So th it's just kind of like my general argument for like I don't think that trusting your emotions is a good way to decide, you know, like why did we go to Iraq and Afghanistan? Because we were ready to blame anybody in the world, you know, for, for what happened on 9-11. That was a very emotional decision to, to go overseas and, and to enter that 10-year war, you know? Um, or occupation so much, right? So I, I just I don't think that like an appeal to emotion is a good way to decide what our what our um, system of values or ethics should be. Well, it's not an appeal to emotion. I'm just saying like emotions do matter to some extent. Like uh, our empathy does matter because like I am arguing that without empathy, we wouldn't even really be able to maintain social contracts. So I don't um. I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't think that emotions do matter when it comes to deciding law or ethics or, or morals. You say that without empathy, we can't maintain social contracts. I mean, I can be. So I can be very selfish. I want to play computer games all day, and then I want to go out and I want to drive my car, and I don't want anybody to fuck with me. I don't care about anybody else, but I don't want anybody to fuck with me. I understand that in order for me to assume that nobody else will fuck with me, I can't fuck with anybody else because as soon as I go over to my neighbor's house and start fucking his shit up, what right do I have for? Other other people to not fuck me up so like using social contract i think that you can generate a system of ethics and morals that works even on people with no empathy whatsoever even if i don't give a fuck i could maybe watch my neighbor die in his front yard of a fucking heart attack and walk away from it and not care but i still wouldn't go over and kill him myself because i want that same respect for me i i have a tr i have a problem uh being convinced by this argument mm -hmm. because the vast majority of people have empathy so a well, vast majority of people also feel feelings of like revenge valuable. and retribution well, no, and shit too well, though right like the these emotions are valuable like we wouldn't have them if they weren't valuable and if they didn't help us form these social contracts which allowed us to be this successful in the first place like so one like, of the reasons why well this, this is a, so this is a successful really is because we can cooperate so easily this this is a really bad road to go down i think because you're you're saying essentially that w these emotions serve some value to us, which I I don't really want to agree with that. But if I did agree with that, then my next question would be: Well, emotionally, you know, we are very much drawn to enjoying, you know, eating meat. Like this is something that has a huge cultural impact to us. It's something that we've done throughout all of our history. Eating meat is something that we are biologically wired to do. We've got sharp canines in the front that help us tear into flesh. Okay, um, you well, know, we've not, got the enzymes really. to digest. Well, yeah, we've got the enzymes and everything to digest. Uh, you know, all the different shit we, we eat. Like, well, we. We haven't we haven't uh, evolved digestive enzymes for the for the reason of digesting meat like we have pepsin and trypsin those are the two basic ones that digest protein they happen to be able to digest meat like cows rabbits they have pepsin and trypsin like they can actually digest meat like we haven't actually made really any physiological adaptations to eat meat well why do we have sharp teeth in the front of our mouth and our canines are well those we don't what, compared to the like molars in the back like like our canines aren't sharp they don't protrude they're terrible for they, they might not protrude a ton but we i mean we ate we digested and ate raw meat for a long time right one of the important well not really um if you if you look at uh australopithecus specimens yeah. uh, a lot of them have well i, I guess there, there aren't too many but there are Austral australopithecus specimens that have uh bone abnormalities consistent with vitamin a toxicity so what that suggests is Australopithecus, when they first started eating meat, they weren't able to really consume uh, like muscle tissue. So what they relied on was organs, particularly the liver, which is particularly soft, easy to rip off and chew. Liver happens to be extremely high in vitamin A, and it's very easy to suffer uh, chronic and acute toxicity from vitamin A. And one of the uh, side effects of that are bone abnormalities. And that's like that again. That's another. That, that's more evidence that we haven't really adapted to eat meat. We why why did we eat? Well, why did we consume raw meats for so long? Hunting was such a big part of like her, that, early humanity. Well, because you could either choose to die from not getting enough food, okay, or you could, you know, eat meat. It, it might give you some pretty bad health issues, but you'll survive and you'll have you'll be able to live long enough to pass on your genes. Doesn't mean we've made adaptations to eat meat. It just means 
it's good enough for us to survive. Why do we have the ability to run like longer distances than any other animal if it was just to, to forage for plants? Or why do we have teeth in the front of our mouth? Why aren't all of our teeth just flat? Well, again, um, if we look at other like primate species, like we have teeth that are very similar. I mean, what orangutans, they have bigger canines than we do. And they, they eat almost nothing but fruit. They eat some vegetation, like, you know, greens and, uh, a, you know, some insects. They have larger canines than we do. Like canines are an adaptation, like can be an adaptation for self-defense. There's also sexual selection. Like females just may prefer that look. Like it's sexual not necessarily Sexual selection that doesn't confer any other type of a biological advantage? That doesn't sound very reasonable to me. Is it most selection made for especially for males, right? Well, would be I'm things that offer you. Sex. Well, I, I, I just mentioned uh, self-defense and there's also sexual selection. Sure. I got, um, I, 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 well, you probably you, know. Like, I'll, I'll give you peacocks as an, as an example. Peacocks, uh -huh. like female peacocks go after peacocks with the largest tails. Mm -hmm. The peacocks with the largest tails are very easily preyed upon by predators. Gotcha. The, the, so so I, I guess like you, you could be not, correct well, in this way, but like, like, not every adaptation is completely ideal for something uh -huh. and not every adaptation is the most practical. Like sometimes like things like sexual selection and just not having enough time to adapt to something like that happens. Gotcha. I, I guess it's just strange to me that we have the ability to detect like rancid meat. We have the necessary faculty to digest raw meat, and we were given a, a really a very effective set of evolutionary well, tools to hunt. Well, wait a second there. Uh, with raw meat, um, Dr. Richard Rangham, okay. who is an anthropologist, um, I think he's a professor at Harvard University, he's actually talked about how uh, fire and cooking our food is what actually you know, caused our brain development. Yeah, because it gave us, it freed up so much of our right. resources to, yeah. Well, uh -huh. it, it not only freed up time, like we spent an insane amount of time chewing, but yeah. it also just allowed us to get way more nutrients out of our food. Yeah, biological we resources, yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, we can digest raw meat, but we're not too good at it. And we're also very inefficient at like actually chewing it, which is why early humans, before we had fire and any kind of tools, we... Eat, we just eat the liver, and then we'd get vitamin A toxicity from it, and get bone or abnormalities. Well, but that clearly wasn't the only thing we were eating. Hunting has always been a really big part of human history. Like, it, it's not like all the people that ate meat like started to die of like. I think you're blowing up this liver toxicity thing a lot. Like, I'm I, sure I'm, maybe there are some people that suffered from this, but the, the vast majority of early humans ate right uh, food or, or ate uh, animals. Right? It was this discovery of agriculture and well, everything that kind of set off all of well, human civilization. When, like, if you're going to make that argument, like, remember uh, the human species c covers a vast portion of the globe, mm -hmm. and you know what we ate was seasonal. We were nomadic creatures. Like, you can't just say, we ate a ton of meat all the time. Like, Well, we hunted it's... for meat. But this isn't the argument that I, that I would want to make. I, I wouldn't appeal well, to this. Well, I'm just saying well, that when well, you appeal listen. to, like, emotion, I'm just saying that's kind of like a strange road to go down because then I could say, well, emotionally, you know, like, we enjoy eating meat. We're wired to eat meat or whatever. Like, it just seems like a strange road to go down. Well, we're not really wired to eat meat. Well, okay, we have the like we have the ability to digest it. We have the ability to tell if it's bad you, or not, and we enjoy the flavor well, of yeah, it substantially. We, we, have an, we have an ability to tell what any whether or not any food is bad or not. Like that's just important for us because we can easily get sick. Yeah, but yeah, but it's not so, but it's not like raw meat smells bad to us. Period. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Meat or dairy. Oh, you, you mean before it goes bad? Yeah, 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 before it goes bad. It's not like all of it smells bad, right? We have an ability to detect when it's gone past that rancid point, right? So I, I'm not trying to say that, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make the argument, like, we need to eat meat to survive or anything. I'm just saying that eating meat has been a, a pretty big part of human history, right? Well, I, I, what I'm saying, like, I'm not denying that, mm -hmm. but I'm saying we haven't really made any physiological adaptations to eat meat, at least none that are adequate to suggest that it's a healthy part of our diet in at to any extent, and uh, we don't have any biological drive to eat meat. It, it's entirely cultural. Like, uh, you even admitted yourself you have no interest in killing animals. Like, if you have no interest in killing animals, how is eating meat a biological instinct? Well, maybe, I, well, I mean, that might have been an instinct that's been weeded out by living in society. I mean, I also don't have, like, an instinct to kill other people, but, I mean, if I lived in, like, a forest or some shit and I saw a neighboring tribe, maybe I would. I mean, society, nurture to a large extent is weeded out a lot of that, so, like, I'm not going to try to 
you know, make an argument that this is some like ingrained natural thing. I would just say, I was just speaking to you earlier saying, well, we have emotions and they're important, but you could use that to justify like a lot of really fucked up shit. Well, like if, if the meat eating thing isn't like uh, adequate, you could say that like people are tribalistic to some extent, right? People like to stay next to people that look like other people or look like themselves, right? So you could make that argument to justify racism or something like that, you know? Okay. Um, I, I don't really want to quite end the discussion right here, but mm -hmm. um, like the problem I'm still seeing is like you're refusing to accept that the actual outcome of the situation like has any significance and it it correct me if i'm what wrong what do you mean by outcome well i mean like just causing unnecessary suffering like you're you're basically saying that outcome has like no value as long as it doesn't affect you like that's pretty much what you're saying. Like as long as it doesn't break a social social contract. Mm -hmm. Like the 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 thing is, why does the social contract? Why is that the only thing that matters? Like whether or not you break a social contract. Why does outcome not matter at all? Like the outcome of unnecessarily causing the suffering and death of animals. Why does that not matter? Only because you're not breaking a social contract. Like it what. Correct me if I'm wrong, but really it, what seems what your like your argument seems to be as long as it won't ultimately come back and affect me, like I don't care. Like it just seems like an I don't care argument. Sure. So are, are you asking me to justify how I like axiomatically approach the social contract or whatever? Is that? Um, essentially like I'm, I'm so when i when i look for morals or ethics i'm looking for things that i can try to impose on other people because i want them to share my point of view so i feel like the um i feel like the social contract is something that i can very easily impose on other people i could tell another person listen i want you to believe these things because if you believe them it will be the best for you right i would approach most of these arguments in a self-interested way i want you to believe this not because it's better for everybody blah 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 but because it's better for you right so i feel like it's the easiest kind Kind of idea to spread to another person it is why i favor things like the social contract so much okay yeah. well it might be easier to explain these ideas to another person like especially if somebody's a sociopath but well, no but it wouldn't I no no, no. That, that's that's not valid Wait, right we've already gone over this like I, I can very easily get a sociopath on board with with what i well, believe I because it's in their personal that. interest right yeah i understand that but i still don't see how that makes like the outcome of needlessly causing the suffering and death of sentient beings like value like it doesn't matter well but, like, but it's not need it's not completely without reason right it's because meat tastes good right would be the argument for doing it and then if right, you have well, an, if you've got an activity that's pleasurable or enjoyable and somebody tells you you can't do it the burden is on them to say okay well why is this activity immoral right akin to something like masturbation right tell me why i can't do this if all i see it is is a way to you know enrich or pleasure myself and i don't see the value in animals you have to somehow you have to make the argument that animals are worthy of value or respect in order to make that jump and say you need to reduce suffering, right? Because you've got to give a reason to care about why they're suffering or if their suffering is even something you should be concerned with. Okay, um, I'm going to ask you this just so I can get a better understanding yeah. of um, your social contract argument. Like okay. this might sound a bit weird. Um, let's say if you saw your girlfriend getting raped uh -huh. um, and you had the power to stop it, you would, right? For sure. Okay, if your girlfriend saw you getting raped and she didn't have the power to stop it like would that be okay for you to would you be like would you there there in that situation knowing that your girlfriend wouldn't have the power to stop you from getting raped would you still allow your girlfriend to get raped well no i mean you would hope that everybody tries as hard as they can i mean not everybody's perfect but i would hope that people would do what they could Okay, like, again, like I guess, like, let me, let me, like, I, I don't see there being a fundamental difference. Let's say that I see a child um, fall in the pool. 
Okay, or let's say that there's a guy walking your pool and a child falls in and that guy could jump in and save that child and he doesn't, right? I would think that that would be a, a morally reprehensible action for him to not just, if it's very easy for him to hop in the pool and get the child out. Now, let's say that you're on a, on a cruise ship and there's a massive storm that comes by and a child falls out of a boat and, and there's another guy and, I, and he doesn't jump into the raging waters to save the child. Like, I'm not going to give him the same amount of shit. I'm not going to say, well, why didn't you risk your life to do it, right? I don't think that would be a very fair thing to do. Okay, well, like, what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is you're basically saying the only reason you'd uphold a, hold a social contract mm -hmm. is so that someone else upholds a social contract. So it's basically like you scratch my back, I scratch your back kind of thing. Yep. So if your girlfriend wouldn't be able to prevent you from being raped, what would be your justification to stop someone from raping your girlfriend so i would expect her i would expect her or any other person to do what they could now that well, doesn't why does it matter if they could do what they could like if you know that they would fail like i thought the social contract was so that it would benefit you so if your girlfriend can't benefit you in that situation why would you do it for her well, be again, because the social contract like... isn't I hope everybody does everything perfectly. It's that I hope everybody tries as much as they can. If she if she can't do anything, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden I drop every other agreement I have with every other person just because she wouldn't be physically capable of doing a certain thing, right? It would just be well if you're not capable. I'm of not that... I'm not saying you drop every other like contract with every other person. Uh -huh. The thing is, if your girlfriend couldn't help you in that particular situation, mm -hmm. your social contract. Your, your social contract argument seems to sort of fall apart a bit. No, because, because everybody seems... has different strengths and weaknesses. For instance, let's say that she gets a, let's say that I get a, a tear in my pants or something, right? She has a serger and a sewing machine upstairs. She could fix it for me. I could never fix any of her clothes. She wouldn't even want me to try. Trust me, it would be a fucking disaster. I don't even do the fucking laundry because I would probably fuck everything up. But just because I'm not capable of fixing her clothes doesn't mean that she's not going to fix mine, right? These are things that she's capable of doing, right? Or, or maybe preparing certain meals that I'm not capable of preparing. Like she can do things that I can't do and I can do things for her that you know that she can do right i provide a place to live um you know i pay for food and, and all of our living and everything right we, there's trade-offs right just because we aren't capable of 100 percent synchronous reciprocation of every single possible thing doesn't mean that no reciprocation can take place at all right okay um if that's the case then like a dog can still reciprocate um <laughs> like a social contract to you to some extent, like they can give love and affection back to you. So wouldn't that also grant them some kind of right to treat them well, like, like not abuse and kill them? So I, I feel like we're not really talking about social contract at this point because social contract is also like not doing things as well, right? Like we're not social contract doesn't necessarily mean that everybody has to help each other as much as possible, more so that we have to kind of respect each other's individual rights, which is something that a dog, I guess maybe with a fuck ton of training, maybe a dog could. Um, but even at that, I'm not sure if it would be at, at the level of, of even what like a, like a primitive human could do. Um, but like things like trespassing on property, stealing things, killing people, um, like these are things that these are social contracts that people can respect, not necessarily just helping or loving people, but also respecting the rights and, and, and autonomy of other people as well. Okay. Do if, if you were, right. if you were going to make an argument about I'm, social contract, dogs are a really good way to go though, because dogs have been literally bred to be like man's best friend over yeah, hundreds yeah. of years. And they have like a really big, like probably even a biological drive to be um, on mankind's right. side. Yeah. Right. I, I was just asking you that to, like under like just understand your social contract argument a bit more uh -huh. because it's still very bizarre and confusing to me like that you know someone would go to this extent to say like social contract is the only thing that matters at all sure and i understand that yeah. and again like when i talk about most of these things especially morals or ethics i think it's really important to be very rigid and, and very cold because when you start bringing emotion into these you get into a lot of like inconsistent bullshit where people are picking favorites or being or inconsistently applying their beliefs like i try to be as rigid on this as possible i know it comes off as, as seeming logic, very cold but... like logic is a good thing but like the thing i'm saying is you know um the golden rule like empathy does matter and even though like, I think we should use both. We should both use logic and empathy in situations. And 
So I, I don't like I don't, I don't like empathy like, because like it just leads to so much like. But for instance, look at like fucking um, Islamic people, right? Um, you know, like you know, empathy could lead you into thinking that a woman wants to wear the hijab because she's protecting her body and she's protecting other men against their own whims. And if we empathize with each other, we understand that everybody is naturally, you know, inclined to these horrible human things, right? I feel like if you go down the emotional path, you can just get into so many weird areas where people are making these really dumb arguments, and it's like, well, let's just think about this reasonably. Instead well, of I'm not saying we should throw it. logic out the window. The the thing is um it's sort of like you are throwing logic out the window to some extent because you're like you're basically saying we should just allow needless suffering when we've already come to the conclusion between humans like needless suffering is wrong like why can't we just come to that conclusion with animals like needless suffering is just wrong well that's kind of the gap that has to be bridged right is to well, why does it matter if animals suffer like needless suffering is a that's like a it doesn't mean anything right there's a needless suffering of trees and rocks or, or any other kind of compound but you have to make the argument for why animals well, trees are, and rocks aren't sentient they can't experience suffering yeah, but even what sentience means and experience suffering these are all very human very loaded terms right I mean, we're all slaves to, to, to mechanical processes, right? As I said before, like if you're talking about suffering or the avoidance of pain is, is, is really just an organism avoiding negative stimuli to maximize chances well, of again, reproduction, Well, again, like, right? even if that's true, that doesn't mean it doesn't matter. Like, I well, think yeah, you can understand that, No, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't you mean that it— tortured. Sure, it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter, but, it, but you're, it's on, the onus is on you to make it matter, right? Like, what— it, So is it just like a certain biological process all of a sudden, you know, makes an animal— somehow get the right that, that humans do in terms of respect for life or like that's that's well, the basically bridge thing. We, we've already determined that with other human beings essentially yeah because human beings can reciprocate right that's the foundation well for... it's not i don't think it's just because we can reciprocate maybe like, not again, for everybody that, that, i, I well, agree with that maybe everybody well, some people are emotional about it sure well listen i think there's a reason why we don't have the death penalty in every country and every state <laughs> yeah like, I, I think there's a reason why we don't have corporal punishment uh -huh. in every country and every state. So but even the people that like, even the people do... that argue against the death penalty use the most irrational arguments all the time. How many times have you heard somebody say like, um, how many times have you heard somebody say the death penalty is wrong? And then somebody's like, well, I think we need to punish criminals. And then they say something like, well, life in prison is a worse punishment than the death penalty. So that should make you happy. Why well, I thought we were avoiding the death penalty because it was bad. Now you're saying life in prison is even worse. So which is it? Right. I, I mean, people make irrational arguments all the time. I don't really look towards like other parts of society to, to try to figure out my system of logic or, well, or reason. Like the point I'm, the point I'm trying to make is is we don't uh, create policies entirely based on social contract. We do, we do rely on empathy, like really most of the time. All like all of these laws, I really doubt we were thinking, what is the best, most efficient way to you know make society go forward? Okay, well let's create a social contract. Like nobody thought of these laws using that sort of reasoning. We, we like it really started from the golden rule, like treat others how we would want to be treated. We can understand that like we wouldn't want to cause unnecessary like suffering to another human. Like I don't understand how we can't uh, extend that reason, like why it's unreasonable to extend that reasoning to humans. Like I'm still not like- Wait, you mean to really animals? The biggest... Sorry, yeah, to animals. Yeah, like, okay. The problem I'm, I'm having is, um, why do you think it's unreasonable to create policies to extend that to animals when it would literally like not cause it would it would even benefit humanity like our health would improve the environment would improve um, and you'd be reducing suffering but like for some reason you're you're just saying suffering doesn't matter so, I, so again we're kind of like we're bundling a lot of these we're bundling a lot of like what we talked about together, but but I mean we've kind of gone through these individually. Like in terms of it benefiting humanity, we don't make laws to benefit humanity. That's not typically how laws work. You know, we we typically make laws well, really? to, yeah. Well, it it is. But well, but no, we don't. For instance, we don't have laws around the types of foods you can eat. We don't have laws that make it so. Well, you know, like, well, again, that that is partly to benefit humanity we want to extend uh, personal freedoms as much so, as possible yeah so exactly but... so what we're really looking to do with, le with with legislation we're typically looking to protect liberty is typically the function of right. government. we're looking to protect we're not but looking to make people think... healthier or better or to but benefit why do them you in. but why do you think you should have the liberty to torture and kill animals well because the argument hasn't been made that that animals are worthy of of any kind of protection right well 
So, so okay. like, why why so, is it okay to hack a, a to hack a tree into two, but it's not okay to hack the head off of a bear, right? There, what is the well distance? because bears are sentient beings that can experience pain and suffering. They have a similar emotional range to us. Like we can understand that they're even though they don't have the cognitive capacity that we do, uh -huh. we can understand that you know they're a living thing on this earth that is similar enough to us where they should be granted some sort of protection or given some sort of respect. Yeah, so I, I, I can argue, or I can understand that, but we, we're coming back to the, the central point again, right? Where like, why does the sentience of an animal, why do these biological processes entitle them to the same rights as people? What is the reason, right? I think we kind of keep running back into this. It's kind of the central point of disagreement. Well, like the, 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 weird, like the weird thing with you is you don't seem to put any sort of value on life or well-being at all. Like you, you just flat out said, yeah, let's just, it's totally fine to massacre a tribe of people if they can't uh, reciprocate rights or, you know, agree to a social contract. With you. Mm -hmm. Like you could do that exact th same thing and justify the Holocaust, really. But you can't. Right. We already went over well, this. Well, you can. What's, what's your right? Well, what is your argument? Let's say you argue. Okay, well, to what extent? Like, like, well, like, well in, in, for that particular example, if you're a Nazi, what's your argument for treating Jews as less than human? Like, what is your rationalization there for that? Or your rationale for that, sorry. Well, you've said a social contract is essentially what we should... I don't even see how a social contract makes... Like, really, the fundamental problem here is a social contract doesn't actually make anything moral. Sure. Like I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Choose to not have a social contract with anyone. Yeah, but if you choose but to you not would. have a social contract no, 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 with someone, no, no, then no. they could choose the well, same, and then you know, someone will kill you. Well, is that wrong? No, someone else is rejecting no. the the social contract. No, of course not. I'm I'm very much for property rights and well, no. shooting people okay, or fucking so, shit up. Yeah. Okay, so what the Nazis did wasn't wrong. They can choose to just reject the social contract. Well. When you say wrong, when, when we're talking right or wrong, well, I think we're usually morally. talking in regards to our society. Now, if you're asking me if they can do it, I mean, did the Nazis reject the social contract and kill the Jews? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, well, you, it's... Was it wrong? Like, was the Holocaust wrong? In in no. my eye, the, you're, what you're asking me is you're saying that like, okay, well, if these people reject your morality, aren't they immoral in your morality? Well, yeah, of course, but they've already rejected my morality, so what does it matter? Like, I mean, I think that the Nazis are wrong, but are you asking me if they have the ability to reject my morality? Of course they do, and I would say the same for slave owners or people that think that women are subhuman compared to men like yeah i mean they, you know the nazis rejected you know what i would consider my personal morality and they rejected the morality of a lot of people i mean i guess it's within their rights to do so anybody can do whatever they want but i'm not going to sit here and say well they're moral because they rejected my morality uh the th for what i'm getting from you is basically you're it's as if you're trying to say like morals don't exist the only thing that matters is social contract. Whether or not you can create a social contract with other people which allows you to like basically protect your own self. Yep, essentially, so, yeah. I, I don't I don't argue that, that with for any saying. Yeah. Okay, I don't so argue for any kind of set the of like, was totally, like the Holocaust wasn't wrong, wasn't right or wrong. It's just that it happened. So under my particular morality, for, for under my social contract morality, I would argue that it was wrong. Anytime you exit the social contract, I would assign a, a moral why bad is that, to that. Why is exiting a social contract wrong? Because now you're on a level that's very different than me because you don't, you're not going to respect well, my— Because you don't respect my, my personal autonomy anymore. You don't respect my right to life or well, my right— Well, why do I have to? Like, well, you don't, but then I'm not so, going to respect yours. Okay, so— <laughs> Okay, so then you agree that causing unnecessary suffering and death is wrong because this doesn't have anything to do with a social contract anymore. Like, you're just saying it's wrong to cause unnecessary suffering and death. To humans. Yeah, that's part of my social contract. Well, no, I, I don't have to respect that social contract, so I could just say but it's if you don't, to kill But if you don't humans. respect my social contract, then that means that I no longer respect you as a human. So you're right. removed from that, yeah. So, if right, you so there's no such like, like you keep going like you keep going back and forth. You said that it's wrong to break a social contract. Well, why is it wrong to break a social contract? Well, I, you're asking me like you're, you're asking me from like a from a meta position. A, a person has morality A and there's morality B. Could an outside hypothetical observer, would he say that it's wrong to move from morality A to B? No, I mean, if you want to from a from a from an ultimate frame of reference, that guy could say that, OK, well, he moved from A to B. That's fine. But now a person who believes in morality A, like I do, if I see you move from my morality to something different, then I would say that's wrong. But it, but it depends on, like, I guess, the observer that you're okay. talking about, like destiny, like. 
the reason we even have social contracts in the first place mm -hmm. is to reduce pain and suffering. Even if it's even just for our own benefit, it's to reduce pain and suffering. Of humans, so yeah. So you have to. Well, why does that only matter for humans? Like, we, we create social contracts to benefit each other, mm -hmm. but you have to agree fundamentally that suffering and death is a bad thing, like, for the most part, as long for as humans. it's unnecessary. Yeah, for humans, for sure. Well, why does that only apply to humans? Because why would it apply to anything else? Well, be, like, you already agree. Like, why do, okay, so why does human life matter at all? Because I'm human, and in order for my life to matter, unless uh, unless you have an argument for why you are extra special, like uh, for like racist people will make the argument that a certain I'm race not saying is... like I'm not saying humans are extra special. I'm saying like why does any life matter? No, no, that, at all? that's what I'm saying. I'm explaining. I'm saying that because for me to believe that my life is important, right, I have to believe that other lives are important too. Because I don't think that I'm intrinsically different than any other human being, right? Right. So so that well, so my respect for humans I, comes just... out of the fact that I am a human and if I want my life to be respected as a human, I have to respect other humans' rights to life. Like that has to be unless I think I'm a godlike figure or somehow special from every other human, right? Like again, your like the social contract isn't coming bef I don't see how the social contract is coming before morality. Like you're basically like you have to start off with the position that at least your life matters for some reason. Mm -hmm. It is immoral to kill you or cause your suffering for no justifiable reason. So a social contract is a good way to develop some sort of moral standard, at least within the own human population. But again, you're starting from the standpoint that like sentient life matters, like sentient beings so, who have well, the will to live, so their lives matter. And unnecessary suffering is a bad thing so i i, I don't I, I, so I don't understand I, how you can just say animal suffering doesn't matter because i'm human sure like, so like, that, like, that makes no sense so so like my, my fundamental axioms would be that my life matters i guess which I, I think most people agree on that i think therefore i am right i know i exist and, and i know that my life matters right and then from there i know that there are other humans that are similar to me and because I want to exist, right? If that's like my fundamental axiom is that I want to exist and I don't want other people to fuck with my existence is like my fundamental belief, right? Now, from that point of view, I want to maximize whatever I, I can to, to, to maintain that belief. I want to exist and I want other people to fuck with me. And for me, I think that the most rational way of doing that is to demand for others the same rights that you would demand for yourself. That, that's, where, that's where the social contract comes from, right? Now, if right, I was no. faced with a bear or a deer or a, or, or not a deer, whatever, I don't know anything else a lion a tiger that would want to eat me right it doesn't matter what part of the social contract or how i engage with him or whatever that dude is going to fucking eat me if he's hungry or if i seem threatening or whatever right so i don't really give a fuck what he thinks what an animal thinks about that because they're not capable of engaging in me with a social contract in this way i'm not a tiger i'm not concerned with the existence of tigers i'm a human that's what i am i'm concerned with the existence of other humans because i know they could be concerned with my existence this is how my moral code kind of works so you're you're basically saying you don't give a shit about anyone else other than yourself, and the only reason you create a more like a social contract with people is just to save your own ass. Correct. But okay. I but I think I can extend um, that to every other person too, so that they can all be self interested in much the same way. Yeah. Right. Um, I think the majority of people watching might find that a bit fucked up. Yeah, for um, sure, it's possible. I, I, don't, I don't think that's how people actually form morals. I think you might actually have a psychological problem. <laughs> like, sure. just, I'm not saying that as an insult. Like, no, I, just... listen, dude, I totally 100% agree with you, right? But but I would also say to the same, and like, and, and I would say for you as well, like if you're a meat eater and, and, you're, and you feel uncomfortable with everything I'm saying, which I imagine there, and I'm sure you would agree, there are probably a lot of oh, meat eaters that, that hear yeah. what I'm saying that are really uncomfortable with what I'm saying. Like maybe you should re-examine your beliefs because you either have to jump on board with what I'm saying, I believe, and that you don't give a fuck if a dog or a cat gets killed, or you need to re-examine what you think about animals and maybe you should become a vegan as well. Like, I, I mean, that, that would be my argument okay destiny um so again like from my position like i'm still convinced that you you don't just create a social contract just to save your own ass like okay maybe that's how you see things mm -hmm. but i don't think that's how the human civilization has created social contracts i think we understand that life is valuable, at least certain life, like sentient life that can experience pain and suffering. And we created social contracts to at least uh, help our own species. 
but we're starting from we're starting from the point where we we recognize that life does matter and suffering like reducing suffering is important so well for me it's reducing like, human suffering just clarifying right that. right right so do you think it is morally justified for like an advanced alien species to just come down and wipe out humanity so so this like, is the, yeah, like this again. is a really good this is a really good question, right? And this is one that I've actually wrestled with on stream before, right? So my argument would be so so your argument, you're essentially saying aliens come down to Earth. We'll we'll argue the aliens are perfect logisticians. If you can out argue them, then they let you exist, right? The alien says to you, We are sufficiently advanced compared to you. You are nothing to us. You guys have deemed it um appropriate to kill animals on your planet because they're nothing, because they're lesser to you. So what argument do you have against us to, to stop us from killing you? Right, is essentially your question? Um, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And it, that's a, that's a really, really, really good question. It's one of like the best ones I've found to, to, to kind of stop the meat eating stuff. Um, for, for my, my answer to them, my response to them would be assuming that these are perfect logisticians, right? My argument to the aliens would be, we are sufficiently advanced such that we can intellectually recognize your right to exist much the same way that you could do the same to us. If you want to destroy us, you can, but if we play this recursively, if a sufficiently advanced alien, um, civilization stumbles upon you guys, what arguments will you have to avoid annihilation from them if you destroy us? Well, again, us, this is just right? the golden rule. Yeah, of course, yeah. And because well, we're capable like, of reciprocating the golden rule, this, I would hope that the aliens would respect our, our this, right to exist. This really doesn't have anything to do with reciprocation. I, I really well, don't see... Well, but the golden rule is reciprocation, right? No, it isn't. No, it literally isn't. Wait, treat golden others as you want to be treated? To do with reciprocation. Don't treat someone else the way you wouldn't want to be treated. That has isn't nothing that... to do with re reciprocation. Oh, I thought that. I, whoa, I'm sorry. I always kind of interpreted that as reciprocation. No, like don't like don't do something to someone that you wouldn't want done to yourself. That really has nothing to do with reciprocation. So again, like you, you like, fu like you fundamentally understand that your that sentient life is valuable and that like suffering does matter. Like it's a good thing to reduce suffering. It's a good thing to reduce death. Wait, wait so and, do you believe in the golden rule? Yeah, like don't... So like don't let's say that somebody wanted to sleep at your house for the night and this person was a known murderer who was also a, a Ku Klux Klansman and he knocks at your door okay, to come in. Would this you... is this is different. Like, this is a different situation. You do have to look out for your own interests. But yeah, no, no. Oh, golden... so, so you have to follow the golden rule, but only if the other person is following the golden rule. It's reciprocated, no. right? Well, no, you, you do have to protect yourself. Like, you don't follow the golden rule to the point where it's going to lead to your death. Yeah, but if you're following the golden rule with somebody else that's following the golden rule, that's reciprocating it, then you're generally okay, right? That's usually how the golden rule works, I, I would imagine. Okay, well, I wouldn't steal someone's wallet, even if, even if I knew the guy was a thief. I just think it's wrong to just steal from someone, like, People don't have to reciprocate the same ideas for it to be immoral for you to do something to them. For sure, I agree with that. But 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 again, you're typically not being that way because you don't want other like, people to be that way at all. Like right? like, de like destiny. I, I I don't understand how you can agree that it's wrong for an alien civilization to just wipe out all of humanity. But you don't agree that it, it, it isn't wrong. You don't agree that it's wrong to for us to just torture and kill animals. Yeah, so, so my argument like, would be like, that again. humans can recognize and respect the existence of other well, aliens. Why does it matter? But, well, because that's the central point on whether the aliens on, on whether no, they should that, respect that has our existence. Nothing, like that has nothing that really doesn't have anything to do with morals. Well, but what does suffering of, of animals, biological processes, have to do with morals? Well, like, again, it's because we can, we have empathy and we can understand that we wouldn't want to suffer. So why would you do that to animals? Yeah, but if you're saying that my reciprocation like, like, doesn't matter, yeah, why does that matter? I think you're trying to suggest that morals are subjective and they therefore don't exist. So you can do whatever the fuck you want. Is that basically what you're trying to say? In terms of like, yeah, rel I'm pretty relativistic in, in regards to how my morals work. Sure. As long as whatever. Okay, well, well, we, we, uh, we already established that it's wrong to needlessly cause the suffering and death of other beings, whether there's a social contract. Well, like, other I don't human beings how, for me. <laughs> well, I don't understand why it would matter that there's a social contract. Like we understand that we wouldn't want to feel suffering and like suffering. We uh -huh. wouldn't want to die. 
So whether or not you've established a social contract with well, anyone. Well, because our not wanting to die is all part of the social contract. If I, For instance, let's say I walk into another person's house and I do want to steal their shit. I've got a gun. I walk in, right? But when I do that, I have accepted the possibility that this person will kill me. I'm like that's part of what's going on. If I break into somebody's house and I want to steal their shit, I'm accepting the possibility that this guy wakes up and kills me. Like that's part of that that deal, right? You you're not like that I I I don't understand how that has any relation to needlessly killing some like an animal. Well, I, I guess I'm talking about like if, if you make the decision to, to leave the social contract, right? You accept that. I'm not saying that like it's morally bad to kill always because just killing is bad. I'm saying that part of that is wrapped up in the social contract, but but that killing will become acceptable if you leave it. Like these aren't like hard moral absolutes or whatever, right? There are times when we kill people in self defense or I guess in war, if that's morally justifiable or not. That's a whole other thing. Um. Wait, let me think. Um, this doesn't like this argument still doesn't make any sense to me because you're the one who's like you're the antagonist in the situation where you're killing animals. Like I also used the um, like uncontacted tribe example. So like there is actually an uncontacted, uh, really primitive tribe living on a small island. Mm -hmm. If anyone comes near there. Uh, they actually shoot arrows like what who cares if they can't establish a social contract the thing is you're going over there and needlessly fucking killing them and wiping them out yeah you keep like, saying needlessly you keep saying needlessly like well, it's some yeah, kind of moral argument but it's island, but a lot of what we do is needless right like what like the type well, of shirt you're wearing well, the color of your chair the, well, the dude, figurines you dude, have in the background dude, dude, dude. no 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 you're trying to trip like really Wiping out an entire population of people is just as trivial as me picking a red chair if, to sit on. If it's not, then you have to provide the reason why it's not. Like, again, like the, you're, you're trying to appeal to emotion where you're saying, like, oh, well, it's obviously wrong to, to wipe out a civilization of people that can't so, reciprocate. But then I like, have to ask, like, well, why? Other than because it's wrong, right? I'm not just saying because it's wrong. We've already established that it's wrong to needlessly kill other human beings. I, I don't think a social contract well, but, but, has anything to do. But th there was more loaded in that. When you said it's wrong to need to kill other human beings, right? Well, sure, but that's needlessly. only... Need needlessly. Like okay, there, but, there but part of that needlessly is if, they're, if they follow the social contract, right? That's where the needless comes from. Like if somebody who's threatening your right to life or if somebody who doesn't respect your right to life, totally. then... Then, then you don't you don't share that same respect with them. That's fine. If they would kill me, given the opportunity to, then Ultimately, I'll kill them. But but the thing is, like, okay, um, look at it from this. Like, I, I don't even need, need to do this. Uh, okay, so why is it justified to go over to a tiny small island that you don't need to go to, have literally no benefit to you taking this tiny small island? Why would you just massacre a whole bunch of people? Like, why is that morally justified? It's So it's not. It, it would be morally neutral. Morally neutral. Yeah. To massacre a whole group of people. Correct. Okay. If, if they're right, not capable of weird. respecting a social contract, if you were to show up on this island, right? So, so you, like, you make it sound, like, really bad, but say you float up on this island and you, and you go there and, and you, your, your boat capsized or some shit and you and your family were there and these people found you and they strung you up and they skinned you alive and then they grilled you over a fire and they tortured you and then they ate you and consumed your bodies and your corpses and everything, right? Like, I mean, I could phrase this in such a way that, like, well, what would keep me from sending people to this island to, to, to you know, exterminate this group of people, right? And now, well, now it doesn't sound quite as bad, you know, as opposed to, like, the peaceful nomadic people that just wander and you happen to go there with machine guns and you go full avatar on the island and blow it all up. You know, like, I mean, you can make it sound bad, but I, when we're talking about, like, moral arguments, like, you're talking about a group of people that are incapable of respecting my right to life. So, no, I have no arguments to, to respect their right to life. So everything is in regards to them is morally neutral. Um, yeah, this is a, a very strange argument. Like what's strange to me is you're valuing social contract mm -hmm. above life itself. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But we all do. Even you do, right? If a human is coming into your house with a gun to murder you, you don't value his life. You don't give a fuck about his life, right? You're well, gonna... no, that, that's not, that's not valuing social contract above life itself. That's just me valuing my life above his life. Like, you're literally saying social contract is more valuable than life itself. So that gives you the right to massacre 
an entire population of people. Well, it, so like it, in terms of how rights are, 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 are doled out, right, you look to government to limit rights. So you assume that you can unless there's a law that tells you you can't. So just because I'm saying you can do something doesn't mean I'm saying it's morally righteous to do something. You can go outside and, and tear up every piece of grass or kill all the squirrels in your backyard if you want. Like you can do that. I'm not saying that it's morally righteous to. I'm just not saying it's morally incorrect to do so either. Okay, so... Okay, we talked about, um, like, you, you, like, just to be clear, you did say it's basically morally neutral to skin, like, torture an animal to death, like, skin it alive and kill it, right? Correct, yeah. You, you'd consider that morally neutral? Yes. Okay, so would it also be morally neutral to go over to that island where the indigenous, indigenous people live? Uh, would it be morally neutral to tie them all up and, like, rape them all to death, even, like, the little children? Yeah, it would have to be, yes. Uh, really? Assuming we're okay. we're assuming in this example that this is a group of people that could never ever ever right, grow to right. respect social contract, right? So so right. when, when you okay. say children, I kind of wonder, do you mean like people that could be like integrated into society that could grow to be part of like? Because if that was the case, then obviously no, that would be abhorrent. But if this was like a group of of beings that were for some reason incapable of ever respecting social contract or other people's right to live, then yeah, of course you you would have to say yeah. Okay. Uh, I that's some crazy shit. <laughs> all right um i don't know i hey jasmine uh how long have we been, we been uh doing this what how long have we been doing the stream Over two hours, okay um i don't think there's really much else to cover um yeah like so yeah so from my perspective um like i, I guess we'll just you know, make our final statements. Like from mm -hmm. my perspective, the reason why I, I, I find your perspective wrong is because you're placing ultimate value on social contract rather than life itself and the overall well-being of he like humans and like other animals on the planet. I think like life itself and overall well-being is worth more than social contract. So I, for that reason, I think it is wrong to needlessly cause suffering and death. Like, just because you don't have a social contract there, I don't think that, like, makes it morally justifiable or morally neutral to needlessly cause suffering and death just because a social contract is there. I can don't I, think social contract makes life valuable. Can I ask you a question? I'm just kind of curious. So let's say, um, I, maybe I'm sure you've heard this one before, but like, let's say that there's a train and it's headed down a track and it's going to run over, you know, 10 people and you have the ability to push somebody in front of that train that would stop the train from running over those 10 people. So it's basically a one life versus 10. Would you push the person to do it? Uh, yeah, probably would. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, then you're morally consistent, I guess. So my answer to that would be no, because I would be placing somebody in harm's way that, shouldn't be placed in somebody's harm's or it shouldn't be placed in harm's way um to take that a couple steps further then let's say that somebody came up to you and they said hey i'm a stranger person on the street otherwise um aside from this one condition i'm a very healthy person i need one kidney you can probably live the rest of your life pretty healthily with only a single kidney would you give me one kidney please so that i can continue to live so you're basically inconveniencing yourself with a surgery so that another person could live would you always accept this deal uh, no, not always. Like, if it was my wife, sure. Mm -hmm. But if it was some stranger, no. Why, if it was, if you knew that they were, it's not like a murderer or somebody that's going to die of HIV or something, like, well, why, why would you not accept that? Well, because I just place my own well-being and the value of my life above a perfect stranger. Even though there's no threat of you dying? Or, or very, yeah, very, very, very yeah, absolutely. Well, there would be a threat of me dying of kidney disease, but let, let, say even if it were like if we had really great medical technology mm -hmm. and there's no chance of me dying, I still wouldn't do it. Gotcha. And, okay. and that I, seems I a bit strange to me that you would make like, the choice. I don't see that. I don't see that as like consistent, like inconsistent for my views because uh -huh. um, I don't have this like all or nothing kind of mentality that you do. Like I, I take context into consideration and yeah, like, I don't value everyone's life as equal. Like my my wife is more valuable than some random person on the street. Sure. So then here's an even more extreme question. I'm pretty sure you know the answer to. Let's say that a doctor had the opportunity to kill you to give your organs to a number of other people to save them. I'm guessing you probably wouldn't be okay with that. Yeah. 
why would you be okay with pushing one person in front of a train to save 10 people, but you wouldn't be okay with a doctor killing you to save 10 other people with your organs? Well, um, I guess basically because it would end up killing me. Like, it, it would be easier to make that decision if um, I pushed, like, another person in front of the train. Gotcha. So but that, like, that kind again, of inconsistency bothers me. So you would be okay. So in that same example, you would be okay pushing one person in front of a train to save 10. But if somebody pushed you in front of a train to save 10, you wouldn't be okay with that outcome. It's a little, like, I don't know. It These sort of scenarios are a little too abstract. Well, I, th I don't think they're that abstract. See, these are interesting. I like the abstractness of these scenarios because they let you really, like, fundamentally analyze your, your kind of system of values, right? So this is right. where somebody, like, um, this is where I kind of have a benefit because everything that I do is very rigidly, logically deduced. So I can give you an absolute answer. But if you make these decisions more emotionally, I think it could be a, a lot harder to arrive at, like, a conclusion that feels good at the end of these kinds of hypothetical problems, you know? Right. Like, like the thing is you're, like, when you're, you're talking about the train scenario, um, it suggests like a weird split decision you'd have to make. Like if it's something to do with harvesting organs, it's, I don't know. It, it's a bit different. Like forcing somebody into an operating room and harvesting their organs is a bit different than like making a snap decision to push somebody in, in front of a train to like save a bunch of people. Sure. You know I, I mean? Well, I mean, we can argue, we, we can create the most convenient world, right? And we can say right. that you actually have a number of hours to choose whether or not you want to push the person in front of the train, right? To make the... To, to make the analogy still be relevant, okay, right? Like, okay. All right. Um, th this is where, like, so, like, for my social contract, I would okay, say that, then, like, I wouldn't want somebody might, to push I'd me. Say so, no. so you wouldn't. Then, I, then I'd say if, yeah, like, I guess if it's if it's a similar situation where I'd have time con to consider, then no. Uh huh. So. And, and I would agree with you, right? I, I wouldn't want to be pushed in front of a train to save 10 people. Maybe I would make that decision on my own. I don't know. Maybe I would. Maybe I right, wouldn't. That's yeah. a pretty big... I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you I would do it. Like, that would be like a very heroic thing to do. Um, but I right. definitely wouldn't want anybody else making that decision for me. And I wouldn't make that decision for another person. Um, but right. the interesting thing is that earlier in your arguments, you're always big on like, you don't care about what the conclusions are. You don't care about what the end results are. Um, and well, earlier I... And earlier I told you that, well, no, I don't. I care more about the morality of the particular decision. Um, and here it kind of sounds like that's what you're saying for the training. You don't really care about the outcome. We're interested more in the morality of this particular decision than whether or not 10 people live or one person lives, right? Well, I'm saying outcome should be considered. Yeah, but like in this particular scenario, you're saying that the outcome isn't really like relevant. You're looking away, at the like, morality of, of pushing well, one no, person in front like, of a train. Taking away personal rights to like to create a better well-being for a number of people I, I i don't think that's necessarily a better thing okay and and i agree with that R regardless of regardless of kind of what that particular outcome is i'm looking more at the particular morality of of taking away the rights of another person right 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 well like again um taking away someone's right to eat meat is a hell of a lot different than taking away someone's right to live. Like, like you're literally talking about harvest, harvesting somebody's organs. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just saying, like, don't eat meat. Like, yeah. the one's a lot more fucking reasonable. Yeah, but we're not talking about what is reasonable, right? Like, we could make laws that say you have to wear a helmet while driving, and that maybe that's actually safer than not. But we don't have that law because you have to justify the existence of a law rather than just say, why not, right? That's not a good reason to make any particular thing something that's legally binding, or even something morally or ethically binding, like why not, right? You could make the same argument with masturbation, right? Anybody can live without masturbating, so why why do it? Like, you should be compelled not to do it. Well, no, you have to make an argument not to do it, otherwise well, you... Well, again, like, like uh, this is something I don't think we're ever going to agree yeah, on. Yeah, like, we keep, yeah. Like, you're basically saying, um, like, life itself doesn't even really matter suffering doesn't even really matter what like ultimately well, non-human suffering and non-human life right right like like all your your well even human life you're you're basically saying it doesn't matter oh sure. so long okay, as yeah. there's no social contract correct yeah 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 so like that's something we're just not gonna agree on at least not now so mm -hmm. um i guess i'll just end the discussion here um thanks a lot destiny uh i'll link your channel uh, after this video goes up and, um, thank you to everyone who donated in the super chat. Uh, yeah, th this was a really interesting discussion. Um, I don't like, I think most people are saying I won, but I think these are 
like my fans for the most part. Yeah, um, it's not good, and and it's not like a win or lose thing. Like I consider it a really interesting yeah. discussion too. Um, the the the, yeah. the 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 hardest part on mine is like whether or not sentience should be respected, and that might be something that I change my mind on in the future. I fully admit that it's definitely possible I could. So I really appreciate the discussion. Okay, all right, uh, thanks a lot, and uh, thank you to everyone who donated donated in the super chat. Okay, well I, I'm gonna stay on the stream, and uh, I'm gonna. Cut the Read Google Hangout. The super chats. Yeah, sure. So, All right. I'm, I'm All right. taking Th off. Thanks then. a lot, Destiny. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate the conversation. All right. See ya. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. I don't know how. I don't know how we navigated that conversation, boys. Woof. But I think. I think we. I think we got there. I think we got there in the end. Somehow. I don't know how. But somehow, I think we got there in the end. Woof. I would like to talk to you about your social con I'm not talking to anybody about this. I feel like I constructed the most, like, I had this house of cards that I was sitting on the entire time. <laughs> I was so worried. Destiny, oh, man. you totally won that debate. <sighs> your all or nothing argument for Meteor totally confused him. However, since Meteor is just a space rock, it makes you sound like a sociopath. Be yourself. I feel like this isn't the end of the vegan topic. Whoa, we're not even done with the autism topic yet, dude. I think this discussion hurt a lot because he kept talking about morality and ethical, assuming that there are moral facts that are inherently... So, like, okay, so... Well, here, let me finish reading it. Assuming there are moral facts that are inherently and objectively right or wrong, the morality is some kind of ontological thing that we discover instead of creating. You clearly don't believe this, but he kept thinking that you do. He kept arguing from this sort of morality while you argued purely out of self-interest. Denying moral realism from the start would have made it clearer. Yeah, because he kind of seemed like a moral realist. I, I, people seem to hate moral relativism. That Stefan Molyneux guy. I don't know. I'm. I think I might be like really morally relativistic. I'm not sure if. Um. But I. A lot of people seem to like really shit talk moral relativism. So I try to never use that word. But um. Do you actually believe everything you said, or were you playing it up a little? No, I believe everything I said. I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna go full JF and and say some shit that I don't believe for the sake of a fucking debate. That's fucking retarded. I would never fucking do that unless I'm telling you. Unless I'm telling you like, hey, like I'm you know just as a hypothetical. But I'm not gonna go and misrepresent my views to try to like troll somebody or win an argument. Like that's fuck that. People should talk moral relativism because they don't understand it. Yeah, maybe. Clappy, you got destroyed in that debate. You could have played that so much better. Do you think you'll go vegan in the future? So meme. hi, Discord. <laughs> if I just kind of like think it out a little bit, like some of the problems is that um, some of the problems that I have is that um, why? Well, so let's say that you have a human that's not capable of recognizing social contract. Why not just kill the human, period? Why not just kill them outright? And I would say something along the lines of like, well, it's because they're human. Why does being human matter? Speciesism is kind of an axiom that I accept that I don't think I ever really define. Um, like, why do I care about humans more than like pigs? Do I really have a reason for that? Or is that just axiomatic? I don't like axioms. I've discovered that axioms are the things that I hate the most. Of all the things that have ever existed, it's axioms. These unjustified <laughs> assertions that you just have to make and accept is true. Um, I don't I don't know. Um, but then I guess maybe we go into social contract memes. What about dogs? You can train a dog to respect humans quite a bit. The dog won't hurt a human. The dog won't go into your yard. The dog will respect pretty much everything you can. What right would you have to kill a dog, right? If I, if a dog with a sufficient level of training is capable of respecting me as a human in every sense of the word, what, what right would I possibly have to, to kill a dog? Um, I'm not sure. You can't not accept something as a presupposition. You say that, Cobain, but one day... When I die and I meet my creator, God, I will discover the fundamental truths of the universe, okay? Well, I guess those would just be my new axioms, huh? <laughs> Please stop th throwing around the term social contract so ha haplessly. Well, is this not like a social contract argument? Am I doing this wrong? That guy was a literal fucking retard. I don't think he was retarded at all. I think he was really, really, really reasonable. I think that we kind of got off on a couple points, and I think he kind of he ran around a little bit, but I probably did too. I don't think he was retarded. I thought he was. I thought he was pretty intelligent. You guys were all telling me that he was like really fucking crazy and shit, and I thought he was perfectly reasonable during that conversation. Mm -hmm.